Yeah, if anyone knows any like ocean-related I Love Lucy episodes, we'd love to hear them. <laughs> Especially deep sea, perhaps. Deep sea ocean-related yeah. episodes are the ones that we're, yeah. we're looking for. Where are we at now? What's our depth and our vertical velocity? We're going to give you an update. Oh, thanks for letting us know that our videos are back up. We're currently at 2,597.4 meters. Do you have on, let me see if I can find on our, my screen right here what the uh, vertical velocity is. Let's see, look, we have a different screen, don't we? Give us a moment. I'm gonna say it's 27. This guy right here, 27. Yeah, mine is reading out 26.6, jumping around a little bit. Still a long way to go. <laughs> Just another thousand meters, right? Thousand. Just meters. about. Does anybody know how to do that calculation in their head and change meters to feet? No. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Just throwing that out there. <laughs> I want to see there's 3.3 .3 feet in a meter, approximately. One meter is about 3.3 .3 feet? Yeah. One meter is 3.2. 3.28. Let's say 3.3. 3.3. 3.3. So, um, that's 3,280 feet left to go. Yeah. We're currently at 8,704 feet. What a, I would, does anybody happen to know off the top of their head what height um, it, the planes travel, like their cruising altitude? 
I just want to make a comparison between that height and the and the depths that we're traveling because I think that might Is be it really like cool. Thirty-four thousand. Thirty-five to thirty-seven thousand feet. There you yeah. go. I guess it depends on what type of plane you're in. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, commercial airliners. Yeah, between 31 to 38,000 feet. feet. The deepest part of the ocean would be Challenger Deep at 11 kilometers. So in my mind, I'm trying to figure out what that is in feet. <laughs> it's about 35,000. 11,000 meters, about 11,000 meters. And then there's 3.3 feet per meter. How are we doing? Wait, so I'm going to guess it's 30. 6,000 feet. How'd I do? Oh, yeah, that makes me happy <laughs> when the brain works with the calculator. <laughs> We're not going that deep, but I'm just saying. oceanography question is there a tides in the middle of the ocean and are the areas that we're exploring impacted by the tides yes there are tides and uh, it's tough to tell if the, the the deepest parts of the benthos are impacted by tides in the surface ocean but maybe by internal tides. Uh, so, you know, tides that occur between different layers of the ocean. No.
figure out. I just sent one. I figured out how to make a submission. Mm -hmm. I did it. The cameras are working fine, the streams are down. So we are all good here, guys. We're working on it for you. Thanks for those notifications about the uh, camera or the video streams. We're working on it for you. We'll definitely make sure to let you know if something pops up that's a highlight on our descent. We still have a thousand more meters to go. Oh, here's one for Steve. Question coming in. Um, has anyone from the team published any research from this area in the last couple of years? Uh, from this area, from the Line Islands area? Um, let's see. Myself, not from this area. Uh, well, I mean, aside from the, you know, the kind of oceanography supplements, uh, you know, articles we do about the exploration season on Nautilus, uh, we put one out in 2019. But in terms of like other, you know, primary literature, uh, most of the work that I put out has come from the area of the Phoenix Islands, um, which is about a few thousand miles west of here uh, or so, uh, and south a little bit. Um, so we looked at deep water corals in the Phoenix Islands uh, in a cruise in 2017, or a couple cruises, we published on uh, some of the biodiversity and uh, oceanographic um, variables that structure deep water coral communities in that particular region of the ocean. Um, but yeah, not not yet in this uh, region of the of, uh, not yet. Islands. Yep. But we're hoping in the future. What about on uh, the geosciences? <laughs> That's a good question that I don't know the answer to. So this actually is not my own personal study area. Um, so actually, no, I do know the answer to that. There, there's a collaborator that Coralie Rodriguez, who will be on the next watch, um, works with named Kira Mizell, who also does some work on ferromanganese crusts. Um, and she has published in the past couple years. Uh, so if you're really interested in that topic, I would definitely check out her papers. As for other things, I do not know. <laughs> but since we're spending so much time down here, I'm, I'm pretty sure in the next couple of years, you'll start to see some stuff. Oh, absolutely.
I wonder what the timeline is for public publication when it comes to exploration and getting the information out um, about the discoveries we make as explorers. I know that there is a longer timeline for long-term studies and other types of physiological studies on organisms, but I'm wondering how, like, you know, what the turnaround is to share, like, any sort of discovery find out here, because literally we're, you're discovering it with us when you're watching on the live stream. Yeah, um, so for each dive, the science team processes samples, goes through all the photos, organizes all of that information, um, and then we end up uh, writing a dive log or a dive report. Um, and so those dive reports, I believe they're available to other researchers and the public at some point, um, but they are kind of give a quick and dirty summary of what we've done, what we've seen, what we've sampled, um, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and that's a, crit a pretty quick turnaround, so we want to typically get those done before the cruise ends. <laughs> right on, right on, right on. Well, folks, thank you so much for uh, tuning in. That's a thanks to the Delta Dan it's Dan. It's time and for Delta Dan and the Arachnophobe Band to check off and let the next watch come on board. Oh, yeah. Mic drop. <laughs> SPL check, one, two, one, two, check. Got you loud and clear. Thank you.
How much longer till the bottom, Emil? Let's see here. About 600 more meters. Hey, what's our descent rate, Hurt? Roughly. <laughs> Didn't hear you on SPL. We're going down at about 25 meters per minute. 25 meters per minute. 600 divided by 25. Thank you. About 24 minutes, Kelly. <laughs> Great. Just made a status and I'll change it in 24 minutes. <laughs> So now if you get the uh, hand down on the waypoints might not exactly line up with the topographic highs, but that's what we're after no. on our track. <laughs> okay, yeah, I will uh, we'll do our best to follow the contour. Great. And for everyone watching at home, uh, I do see your chats about channels uh, one and two being offline. Uh, it's a short side issue uh, we have alerted them but uh, due to the time difference <laughs> uh. it might take a little bit uh, they are six hours behind us on the east coast so um or are six hours ahead of us yeah. is what i meant so um it might take a little bit but you can watch um the quad view i know the that makes the fees a little bit smaller but uh, unfortunately that's what we have to work with is the video out as well as the audio it's the video, yeah. Okay, wow. Well, your quad's nice. Yeah. Yeah, I like watching quad. But the shore has been alerted. And while we're descending, they can check out the profiles of the best looking watch team. It is mixed. <laughs> we, I did talk to our webmaster, so we should. Yep, <laughs> there we are. <laughs> <laughs> He got it fixed last night within, uh, after, until like we only had 17 minutes left on our watch and he's like, I fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, so before we get to the bottom, uh, do a quick round of introductions. You can see our faces now on the website, but um, just do a quick, who are you, what do you do? And uh, maybe where you're from. So I'll start, I'm Kelly Moran. I am communications lead on this expedition and uh, I am the education program coordinator for the Ocean Exploration Trust. And I am from Connecticut, so quite a distance away from where we are now, but happy to be in the warmth. Hi, I'm Al Petruncio. I'm the watch lead for this section, uh, expedition leader for the cruise and uh, Retired Navy I, uh, oceanographer. I teach oceanography as an adjunct professor at uh, Anne Arundel Community College in Maryland. I do some work with the American Meteorological Society for uh, educating teachers about oceanography. Been coming out here since 2013. Uh, and I am from the Annapolis, Maryland area. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Coralie Rodriguez. I'm sitting in the science seat. I'm a graduate student from the University of Rhode Island's Graduate School of Oceanography. Um, and I currently reside in Providence, Rhode Island. Hello everyone, my name is Leilani Sablon. I'm sailing with EV Nautilus for the first time as an ocean science intern sitting on the data logger chair. Um, I'm a graduate student at the University of Guam where I currently live. In the front row, this is Megan Putz, your navigator. I am from the University of Hawaii, based in Honolulu. And uh, I'm happy to be here, navigating. I'm Jake Bonney. I'm sitting in the Hurt chair tonight. Hey. And I'm from Rhode Island, and that's where I currently reside. And I'm Robert Waters. Uh, I'm OET's facility manager and ROV engineer in San Pedro when I'm not out here. And I'm currently in the uh, 
Argus seat. I'm Dave Robertson. I'm a uh, lead video engineer for this uh, expedition, uh, and I design and build TV stations, uh, including this one. Uh, I'm uh, of Anchorage, Alaska, but also spend a lot of time on the coast of Oregon. Happy to be here. Thanks, all. Hoping for another successful dive. And we had some other section take up the blue, most of the blue water for us this time. But this will be a shorter one. I think we will recover at uh, noon tomorrow. So this will be our only watch for this dive. We're recovering at noon tomorrow? No, no. Yeah. We have one that at eight. Like We're the eight to 12 <laughs> watch. <laughs> you better show up. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get more blue water action tomorrow. Wishful <laughs> thinking. <laughs> ah, sleep. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, these things. I told Mark I was ready to set up the daisy chain when we were recovering the vehicles yeah. yesterday. So I'm probably never going to hear the end of that one. <laughs> Sleep is a good thing. <laughs> Eight to twelve doesn't lend itself to that much. You know? Yeah. So yeah, we'll get two hours, more than two hours of blue water tomorrow. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and we're on our way down to 3,752 meters on this dive. Deepest one yet. Oh. Really jumped. So, Megan, my understanding was the, uh, I think the general consensus is the sweet spot for deep water corals is like 2,500 meters up to, and shallower, you know, up to what, 1,000? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much where you see those high density communities. Um, but sometimes we see some high density ones deeper. It's just like there's this weird little, you know, no go zone between about 3,000 and 2,500. I don't know why that is, but if you see a nice community down deep, usually it gets a little sparse in between that um, deep community and the shallower one. So the plan when we're on bottom is we're going to try to go to the local high areas. The map might not be 100% correct. Okay. So I'll, I'll follow your lead. All right. Sounds good. Because it looks like there's like this ridge. That's what we want to follow. Yeah. I can show you the, uh, the slope. Okay, yeah. So get on bottom and basically start heading east? Yep, pretty much. Jake, Sorry. I hate, hate to disappoint you, Jake, but uh, this science discussion today uh, came to the conclusion that we don't need to push course. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> okay. <laughs> So 
Uh, it should speed things up. Whoa, I like those colors, Megan. Yeah, yeah, that's oh. our, <laughs> our slope map. Oh, okay. So red, red means really high slope, and purple means low slope. Do you have a backscatter map? I do. Turn off the. Uh... Huh. Hmm. <coughs> so, are we not using the 4K camera? What's the scene with that? Well, the shore side is satisfied with the tests. Yeah. Uh, the images aren't particularly desired. Oh, no. Oh, really? <laughs> At this point, uh, it's a lot of data to transfer. Oh. Uh, data standpoint. Still camera is set up for lots of collections, so. Um, I can on the basket? Uh, or did it already get moved? Was that a Danism? No, it's still down there. Uh, yeah, I think there. maybe. Yeah, I know you'll be working on Argus. Um, so when you have time, you could make them move. So that Steve doesn't want it down there? Uh, no, it was... Um, Steve wants it there. Yeah, he was... Yeah. I kind of liked it there. I kind of like it. I like to zoom, but uh, there's some folks who would prefer to have more of that uh, range with the Herxus. Yeah. Tilt range. I don't think we need the space on the porch. I thought they didn't get many images worth the darn them when it was up mounted high. I don't know. I'll ask Steve about that. Because yeah, that was offered as an option. Which which option? Uh, moving the uh, still camera up top. I think they they were saying they only got like two out of ten thousand images that were usable. Wow. Like per <laughs> dive. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it was Seems an like ideal location. Yeah. That's Seems like a lot of extra work <laughs> for. Not much. Well, I'll uh, pull the string on that. Well, good news. Channels 1 and 2 are back to showing our dive. All so right. Somebody on shore is awake. <laughs> wow. Do they have watches in the Inner Space Center? I wonder. They do. Um, they mostly do it for Okeanos because they data log from shore instead of like what we do here on the ship. Um, but I think they do have somebody on call for all of our dives. All right. Megan, there's a question coming in. Um, somebody uses a mapping software called Civil 3D, and they say that our uh, map that you were playing with and showing Emma, like the different color variations, is a lot cleaner than theirs. Um, do you want to talk a bit about the program and what we use? Um, sure. So I haven't actually heard of Civil 3D. It's not something I'm familiar with, but the program that we're using is called HiPack. Um, it's a pretty old program that's been around for a while. Uh, so a lot of people are familiar with it uh, in the mapping community. And uh, you can load different um, t bathymetric maps, backscatter maps, slope maps into the program along with contour lines, which is what I have set up right now. Uh, and it shows our real-time movement of our ship and our vehicles. And so we're getting tracking, not from our mapping software, but from the actual ship and the vehicles via our, uh, our beacons and the ship positioning system. So HiPack is a, a nice program because it allows that information to come in and display in real time. Great, thanks. And then you're also working with another system tracking the vehicles, which the ROV pilots can see. Yeah, so the ROV pilots prefer um, what we call RovNav. Uh, it has a sort of watered down version of what I'm using in HiPack, basically showing just the tracking of the ship and the vehicles 
without too much flash and color so that the pilots can see the distance between the vehicles and how they're moving together without all the extra drawings that we have on our uh, navigation map. So navigator wants to know things like how much slope is in the area, uh, what are we expecting later on, what are our waypoints, what's the plan, but all that information gets to be a bit much when you're just looking at where are the vehicles so, in space. So interestingly though, <laughs> other vehicles use RobNav because you can put overlays in it. Oh, you can. Yeah, we mm -hmm. cannot on this version because we have nobody to support it to fix the bug that that has. Oh, that's But in Alvin and Jason, they use that exclusively because you can you can turn the map opacity way up, like you're down, so that the map's just a background image mm -hmm. and the icons stand out really brightly. You know, yeah. like I can't look at high pack and see where I'm at because it's just a little stick figure, yeah, right? Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Really small I can't too. look over there and see where I'm where I'm going. But you can, nice you can draw, you can draw a range and bearing lines on there and you can have target files and all that in RobNav. So. That's what I'm used to <laughs> with uh, other vehicles. Yeah. Um, so it's a little bit We different. have a new version of that, but it hasn't been incorporated yet. So. I see. And w how long are those trails that you have in ROVNav to track the, where the vehicles have been? That's useful. Um, well, yeah, if you look up top, see underlays? Yeah. That's where you can import maps, but... I see, but it doesn't allow you to do that. It, it has a bug in this particular version. Well. Yeah, but so I, I can set how long um, that trail is, both in RovNav and in HiPack. Right. So, it, obviously, this isn't like the full track of our dive. Sure, but it's like the past half hour or something, or, yeah, really good if we want to retrace our steps. Yeah, it's a, that can really come in handy. So you see, if, you know, we've made a big loop, or we want to go back to where we sampled that last coral. Um, that could be very helpful in tracking where we were. It's particularly useful if you're working on an underwater observatory uh, and you want to go back to the same instrument that you were just at. Someone's wondering what are the contour line intervals? So the white contours are 50 meters and the black are 10 meters. Up bottom. Oops. This guy. So about 200 meters to go. About that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So to answer your question, our, our trail length is this arbitrary number. Um, that's the number of X's, and it's set at 30. 6,000. <laughs> okay. I can't really, I could probably <laughs> calculate, um, oh, uh, that's like 60 minutes, so max oh, trail okay. age, 60 minutes. Great. All right. <coughs> yeah, I learned the hard way to turn those on. <laughs> yeah, so Is I that can, a wrap? Uh, I can clear the trails, so when we get on bottom, we don't have all this water column a stuff uh, confusing us. Great. Well, because it's, Wait, I want to go the other way. Yeah, if it if it goes into the next cycle, it yeah. can yeah, it'll wrap over. It'll you know go off the top and onto the bottom. So if you reduce the range down too low, it'll show oh. up in a lower range for numbers, later. You know. Yep. Should I wrap my M and M's? <laughs> but. Uh, I think that's the bottom right there. Maybe. Oh, it keeps. Well, I just changed the range again.
Yeah, so that, that was a wrap. So that's a real one there, right? Yep. So apparently I didn't take enough scans of this room this morning, so I'm going to have to come back tomorrow morning and do it all again. What are we doing with those scans? <laughs> we are going to turn it into a virtual oh uh, field trip for wow. schools to like learn a bit about the ship. We've That's been cool. scanning various locations. Um, we've scanned the whole entire ship, but now we're scanning more in-depth rooms so that people can kind of learn a bit about like the main hubs on the ship. So these. Uh, brief videos that'll be stitched together? Yep, so I'm, I have to like spin around the room a bunch of times, so apparently I didn't do it enough this morning and there's gaps still in the, oh, okay. <laughs> in the map, so I have to come back tomorrow and do it a whole bunch more times. <laughs> so you're gonna have to do some gap mapping? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're almost a navigator. <laughs> <laughs> All I do is spin in circles and like, it's basically a game, like, the app itself to make these scans. I just have to follow this little circle with the iPhone and I connect it to another circle. And once it's connected, it takes a picture of the room and then it shows me where to go next. So then I scan it and I go to the next circle and it takes another picture. So I just have to like keep following it wherever it wants me to take a picture. That's really cool. Yeah. I thought I did it enough, but apparently I need to do it. <laughs> oh, is that what Bunch they more. use for like, um, Making maps of houses that are yeah. on the market? Yep. I see. It's the same exact platform. That's cool. If you turn the wrong direction, does a monster jump out and grab you? <laughs> probably. We, should, we could back. probably implant one. Oh, that would yeah. be terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> well, about 100 meters. So we come stop on the windshield, like 30 meters, and then yeah. approach and then the bottom. You, yeah, and then you 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 can back up till you get some back and down. Yep. And okay. then when you got some slack in the tether, then you spin around quick and then drive under. Right. Or it depends. It depends on which direction you yeah. want to go. But. Our first ship move will be probably zero six zero would be good. Okay. Let me check it out. Zero three zero to waypoint one. When you say zero something zero, <laughs> what does that mean? Um, that's the bearing that we want to move on. So from zero to 360. That's oh. it. Yeah, so yeah, you're thinking about a circle. Zero, zero, zero is true north. Okay. And we just kind of go around in a circle from there, clockwise. Mm -hmm. And then how, and then a step when you're saying like a step or something. So, yeah, each step is going to be a distance. So... If we want to move slower, we might do 10 meter or 20 meter moves. If everything looks really flat and easy um, to traverse, we might do larger moves. So maybe 100 meters. All right. I did take a little time to like wrap my mind around the whole 360 thing. Mm -hmm. But once you get it, it starts to make a lot of sense.
Oh, I, I see, see something. Vibe. Yeah. Woohoo. There's your points on your compass. Mm. <laughs> All right, I think we got rocks down there. You gotta get rid of the Z bias. Up. Just you can hit the Z bias zero Z bias. Right. Yeah. There we go. You got good delta, so you can quit driving down, but okay. just straight back until you get slack, and then go for it. Roger. With a yeah, no auto heading. Yep. You're probably good there. You can do the spin. So we may be less sedimented here yeah. than the last dive, since we're so f much further from Palmyra. Can we try and look for a rock? They're going right Yeah, in. they got to settle down first, do, <laughs> oh, their, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do their white balance. No, no, I want it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just put the suction hose and <laughs> vacuum it up. No shortage of rocks. Mm -mm. Some of them look loose. Thirty-seven that twenty-eight. It's pretty deep. Those look like nice corally rocks. These look like yeah. <laughs> It's like the lunar module looking for a spot to land on the moon here. It's a bit of a slope. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right, do I just sit down anywhere? What? Do I just sit down anywhere so we can do our white balance? Or is there like... Uh, I mean, you can dial in your Z bias so you're okay. sort of neutral. Probably minus 30. But you don't need to set down. I wouldn't do it because okay. you make a mess. So, I mean, we I guess we Just are when we make a rock or grab a rock, but yeah. less dirt the better. So, what's the altitude? Um, I'm about five meters off yeah, the bottom. Okay, but that's the rear of the vehicle. So yeah. Oh yeah. Right.
there's Herc. Missing from... Oh, she's got to do a reset. Yeah. I just I go by the overhead view, like you, you went off the bottom. Oh. Yeah. It's a fish. Oh. Where'd it go? I think you did your lease there. Yeah. Oh, I see where I am. I'm gonna turn to port. I gotta back up. Yeah. Come up a bit. So we don't want to yank on Argus much because you're gonna just pull it right around because we only got one thruster. Yep. <coughs> Let me know when you're ready for the reset DDL. Jake? Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready. You ready? Yep. yep. Okay. All right. Should be reset, but I don't see... Where did it go? Our green line is not here. Oh. Not right. Yeah, I think there'll be a pretty significant offset in the USBL at this depth. Yeah, so I'm right down there on the bottom. <laughs> Sometimes you can, if you just pan up, maybe, I don't know, well, you're looking away from me. But if you're pointed at yeah. Argus, you can look up and see it in the sky. You know? Or you can see it maybe glow up in the rear cam. Oh, there it is. Cool. Now you're poking in at the yeah. lower corner mm -hmm. there. Not that way. No. I think you just need to back up. All right. All right. Just stand right on the outside of that <laughs> view. <laughs> oh, there I am. Yeah. All I have enough tether to turn around. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah. Yep. Hope you turned too far and went past it. 
fell out the corner again, at the other corner. Really? Yeah, there you go. Oh, I'm coming Straight in. ahead. Yeah. Ready to go down? Yep. Right. This looks like we're right at the Olympus right there, right? But another wrap in. Yeah. <laughs> it's past past four thousand. Or right around it. be past 4,000. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> Not with this configuration. I had to go down and look at the wire. Yeah. That's about where the lump is right there, right? Or is it on the other it's side? It's on the other on side. The other it's side. on the forward. Uh, Stop coming down. I pushed in a little bit on Argus to try and minimize There's that your favorite lens snail. flare up there in the upper right hand corner. It's flailing. Oh, oh yeah. Acrobat. What kind of snail is that? It's a Gaza Daedala. Uh -huh. I like to call it the flailing snail. Some people call it a dancing snail. <laughs> it there. uses its very um, long foot to sort of jump off rocks and swim away. Oh, Here's this guy right here is swimming away. See, See cucumber? cucumber? Yeah, cucumber. Whoa. And a bamboo coral. Going crazy. Yeah, sometimes you gotta come out and go back in. It, sometimes it just gets crazy like that. Did the GUI get reset? You probably got. Yeah, so it got reset, so you're back to this stupid 10. I'll change that. Alright. And then I changed this max velocity down too for the auto altitude. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can probably go in auto XY and auto heading and everything. A lot of us. Ready for a white balance too when you are, Jake. Okay. You want auto depth too? Yep. There you go. Oh. Well, that's, you just got to watch out because it can take off. Sometimes it's auto bottom dive. <laughs> yeah.
It's shaky. Yeah. We're, we're bouncing around a bit. Yep. You're all right. Just, you can... Uh, Uh, <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Does not want to hold autos. There. Yeah. So it's interesting at the, yeah, it's, it's the, the heading is going bonkers. Yeah. Huh. What, what is, is that? Yeah, why is the heading bouncing around like that? I don't know. I'm going to change the heading reference for a second. Okay. If you're ready, it takes off. All right. Ah. Uh, it's all better now, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> I had to come out of Octane, then the TCM2, and then back, back to Octane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's another bug. <laughs> <laughs> so you many bugs. on that stuff. <laughs> I'll tell her about this one. All right. Look, I'm going to write in the red book. Can you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought you were taking a stand against that thing. <laughs> I am. I can't, you can't search it. I can't see it when I'm not out here. Yep. All right, so now I... What do you need me to do, Dave? Be the legend that you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, that's nice say that. uh, get the uh, white patch out in the light, middle of the screen. Might have to tilt the camera up a little bit. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, we want to fill the frame with the white patch in the light as much as possible. And turn the lasers off when you get a chance. Wait. Oh, wrong one. Good there? Uh, we need it out in the light. Oh. Or the light's on if there's some lights that are not on. Uh, porch. Uh, porch. Uh, that might not go oh. out, but that'll do. you want me to? I can take that off. No, no, no. I, if, okay. you, if you can't get the arm out into the pool of light, which maybe not. I uh, can try. Let's do it. Yeah, as much as you can. Too far away, and then I can't zoom into it all the way either, so. That's probably. All right, well, let's go with porch lights on. Then. Okay. So I definitely need more. And zoom again. And tilt down a little bit if you would. Just get as much white in the middle of the screen as you can. Let's tilt up a little bit, or t tilt the camera down, or the yep. arm up, one or the other. Perfect. Right there. Let settle. Good. All right. Okay. Camera's going to black for black balance. Mav, can you zoom out just a bit on HIPEC? See the first couple waypoints. Okay. So I think that actual waypoint one will be a little bit northeast of its current location, just so we get up on that ridge. Yeah, so I think uh, we should just probably just start heading. Oh, uh, well. Uh, yeah, we could do that. Yeah, that's quicker. Yeah, just like right up the ridge, unless right you want to hit this waypoint. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're we'll follow a ridge doing what you were just showing going east. So, yeah. <coughs> oh yeah, east northeast. It'll be on a ridge that's jutting down. So that's fine. It's yeah. It's. I mean, when we got to the bottom on the last dive, it was around 5 PSI. So it's lower, but we are deep. Uh, yeah.
Okay, ready to roll? Or? Yep. Sorry, we we're just doing a quick gauge check. On oh, sure. Running through everything. Just say the word. All good with the gauge check, or yes? To oh, we okay. can we can start. Okay, Megan, let's give him a bearing and step. Um, sure. So, which direction would you like to head, Jake? Um, uphill. Um. So the slope seems to be pretty due east. Okay. Yeah. Zero nine zero, it is. Yep. You want to start with twenty meters. Yep. Cool. Let's do that. Bridge nav. Can we get a twenty meter move zero nine zero? Thanks. And it'll take a while for Argus to start swinging, so maybe we could kind of search the local area for a uh, loose rock. Not sure if it's a video or an ROV question, but someone's wondering how long does that tape that you use for the white balance, how long does it last on the arm before having to replace it? It's been on there for a while. I guess when it gets uh, sticky, it comes unstuck. <laughs> and, uh, it's good tape. Yeah. We've got a uh, right. Blow the lasers down here. Do these look loose? Is it yeah, maybe. Oh, is this a black light. black coral on right. the left? Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, it looks like a bathopathies. Lots of good stuff right here. Yeah, right off the bat. Something deep red in the lower left, probably a cucumber. Yeah. Zoom in there, Dave. That's cool. Symmetrical branching. Crinoid. Yep, crinoid. Bamboo, maybe. These rocks look pretty stuck. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Carly, someone's wondering what type of rock are you looking for? I am looking for ferromanganese crusts, um, but another scientist on board is looking for fresh basalts. Uh, so, and then a, a third scientist not on board is looking for microbes in ferromanganese crust. So, it's um, kind of a weird position that we're in because the ro we're finding that the rocks that are good for me are not good for the other scientists on board and then because they're so altered. And then uh, I'm worried about uh, contamination of my rock when we split the, <laughs> when we mm. split the rocks for the other scientists not on board. <laughs> so it's definitely, so we're hoping to really quickly right off the bat just get a lot of rocks. Um, we're hoping to, we can only collect 10 in the monument. And we're hoping to collect 10 all before 2,800 meters. Yeah, 10 per dive. Per dive. It 
so the uh, the more angular basalt rock might be better for age dating, which is or geochronology, which is Amber's focus. Yeah. <coughs> and so, uh, so we just uh, we were just in the what lab? Ilani, data logger, and myself, um, and some of the other science team members, and we were breaking open rocks and. Some rocks that we assumed would be really good for uh, age dating broke them open. They're completely weathered on the inside. A bit of a Beautifully angled, yeah. looked really yeah, looked perfect. Yeah, looked great. Looked perfect on the outside. Yeah, Get so into the inside, nothing. Huh. Completely useless. Thin veneer of iron manganese crust, I guess, but yeah. the inside looked like clay. Or, uh, yeah. It was a really light brown color, and uh, basalts uh, come out black. So <laughs> you can only imagine what might have happened to that rock to alter it so much. I mean, I guess you can't imagine. It's it's water. <laughs> <laughs> so then, Emil, someone's wondering if there's a 10 rock limit per dive. Is there a limit to how many dives we can do in this area? or a total rock limit for the expedition? No, <laughs> to the second two questions. Great. <laughs> <laughs> we could dive as, oh, oh what do we have here? We can dive as many times as we can, uh, weather permitting. And so yeah, it's an interesting balance we try to strike between length of dive and number of dive sites. Yep. That's a cute little jelly. Very pretty, yeah. 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 We're also in this one particular area because the weather in other locations is awful. So, <laughs> uh, just yeah, not stormy, but the strong trade winds just and some swell coming from distant storms, uh, resulting in some ten-foot seas that are no fun to operate ROVs in. Nope. Not safe. But here has been okay. What has been? Here, like this loca like yesterday's location, today's location. Yeah, best spot so far, weather wise. Would you call this pillowy? This is oh yeah, this is a little pillowy. Very bulbous. And very attached. Yeah. <laughs> so we're not going to feel these moves for like 10-ish ten, minutes at least, right? Yeah, I think so. 15, 10, 15. So yeah, we'll just have to kind of keep them, keep them going. Yep. No race, but I think 20, 30 meters is good. But Sounds good. Jake, someone's wondering if this is your first time doing everything in the Herc seat. Uh, I've been doing it a little bit more each time I've come out. So, um, what? Oh, I know. I've just been, uh, like, with each season I've come out, I've done a little bit more, taking on more. Um, of the responsibilities little by little. It's all like situational. Mm -hmm. So. What's that blob on the left? Is that a sea cucumber? It sure big is. <laughs> Why does it look so big? Yeah, it looks Because it is. It's <laughs> really <large>. big. <laughs> Why is there a dent in the sand next to it? I don't know. Can we get lasers on it? Yep, it's Whoa. pretty large. Wow. <laughs> wow. Huh. He's so chunky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at 
going to zoom on that guy. <laughs> All right. Zoom in on a high carb diet. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of sand sediment. <laughs> it's going to take off. Oh, no. Look at him. Whoa. <laughs> so <laughs> Ooh, Oh, what? yeah. Nice stretch there. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so awkward. It's the biggest one I've seen. It's so big. Oh, wow. Healthy. Yeah, very healthy. It's having a hard time taking off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's too big. Wow. It's the mother of all sea cucumbers. <laughs> it's cool, though, watching like the... Oh. 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 <laughs> New sand. Kind of light the load. <laughs> But it's cool watching their movements. Like, they're it's like still awkward ab sand. crunches. Oh, okay. Yeah. Usually they're a bit more graceful. <laughs> and smaller. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, he's large. Yeah, some of these deeper living sea cucumbers can get quite big. Kind so of. Uh, the psychropodes, the ones that have that long tail. Oh, look, we got a loop. Be quite oh impressive. yeah, to see eggplant. That <laughs> <laughs> ain't cool. Not as delicious nope. as eggplant, though. <laughs> we have to watch that. Oh yeah. What's that loop on, Bob? That's on the daisy chain. Oh. That on the uh, Argus side. Huh. So. Yeah. <laughs> so if that gets loose, it can get hung up in the thruster, which is the only thruster we have. Yeah. No one likes thruster bait. Oh. All right. I think Argus is starting to move. Yep. So Steve is uh, asking us to keep our eyes peeled. There's some corals and sea pens in this area. So we wa at least want to zoom in on them when we see them. Yeah, so sea pens are going to cast a little bit of a shadow on the sand. It's going to look like a little line. So it's really easy to miss. They're going to be light colored, sometimes white, maybe a little bit peach. Hey, it's at, at this depth, Can we anything. Get another 20 meter move, zero nine zero. Anything we see at this depth is important. See those little squiggly lines, the track or something? Yep, those Definitely. are usually sea cucumber trails. See, yeah. There's something dark on the sand up ahead. Yep. That might be a sea cucumber. Smaller one, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> Is that getting longer there? A little bit, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, that's not good. That is not good. Yeah, it's definitely it's getting looser, huh? I don't see an end. Is that a... Do you want me to drive out to the end of the... Uh, I don't know if that's going to help any or hurt it. I don't know if you'll... Yeah. You'll be able to see, mo see it better, though. If it's Maybe. No. Oh. Could we get a zoom on that uh, sea cucumber or, or whatever it is? Yeah. 
Ooh. How close is that, Bob, to the thruster? Pretty close. Pretty close. <laughs> Uh, this is unusual looking. Yeah, so this is an amperima or a penny agony. Um, one of, it's either one of those two genera. Also, it, it has those little legs, so it's related to the sea pig. It's getting looser. Yep. This one's going to take off too. See it getting ready. You're going to be very unhappy, but. Yeah, you think that it's. Table, if, if that gets caught in the thruster. We already have our forward thruster. No, no good. Yeah, so. we, you know, we dove with one thruster, which happens to be the one that's right where that line's going. Oh, man. It's getting looser. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming right yep. off there. We need to recover. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's, it's definitely getting looser, right? It's getting longer. Yeah, it's sliding up. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. boy. Oh, yep, yeah. we got a bail. All okay. Right. Got to play it safe here. Yeah. Well, yeah, we can't. Yep. Oh, that's oh man! That's let's, I'm gonna secure the thrusters here. Yeah, that's realist. That's sliding off on the from from the back from the herc end. Yeah, the whole it, dang thing is coming. It's is it? But it's still. Uh, yeah, this. But could be but it looks like it's tight on the herc, and it doesn't make. I don't know. Well, it's like sliding back towards Argus. You know what I'm saying? Like. Yeah. It's like it 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 broke. Maybe. In the, in I don't know how it break. I don't know. You got a wrap there. All right, I got to She's stretching out. Yep. Oh, I see cucumber, Mr. Chonky. Yeah. Hmm. So you want the um, bridge to do a, you know, a steady forward motion? Uh, I got I got the thruster off. I think we're all right. Just doing normal, normal deal. Oh. Yeah, you can, you can see the speed. middle. Yeah, it, there's a yeah. yeah. What? No. Normal recovery, you mean? It's just sliding right back. This is daisy chain, right? Is that daisy chain or a lift line? Oh man. Oh. That, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. it's lift line. 
because the daisy chain's yeah. tight on the back on yeah. the park side. Yeah, it came. Yeah. Yeah. The recovery line is gonna be all flopping around. Great. Alright. You start coming up. Yeah. Okay, Megan, inform the bridge we're gonna re recover. Okay. It's gonna take a while. Yep. Got to watch. Bridge now. It's one of those cruises, Jake. Yep. We are going to recover the vehicles. Uh, either the lift line or the daisy chain on our tether is coming loose. Yes. Thank you. I hope I can do this dive submarine. <laughs> Shotgun or? Ready to stay up till two o'clock there, Jake? <laughs> <laughs> Rip. <laughs> Get in a solid five uh, hours. Yeah, I was looking forward to some sleep, you know. I got up at five AM this morning for that interaction. <laughs> you know? Yeah, nice. <laughs> no sleep, Jake. Ever. <laughs> Who needs that? Who needs it? You can uh, sleep when you're dead. <laughs> you didn't take a nap this afternoon? When? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I guess you had the vehicles on yeah. there. <laughs> Poor Jake. Sorry guys. <laughs> There's only a couple weeks left of the cruise. You'll be fine. Yeah. You'll be fine. <laughs> There's I think we're like not even halfway through yet. <laughs> I also looked up and the longest time a person went without sleeping was I think like three weeks, so. That can't be good for them. <laughs> <laughs> that has to be <laughs> the worst idea. Oh boy. Three uh, weeks, oh my God. <laughs> did they survive? Uh, yeah, they did, but um, We're never so the the they had a that. lot of health issues afterwards. Yeah. Their like, organs started failing. And nice. Such. <laughs> ah! Lift line. Look at you, Johnny on the spot. <laughs> yeah, look at all that floppy flippy in there. You can see the recovery line looping down right in the middle there. Just we had a big bundle of daisy chain up on this end. And the one thruster we have is on yeah, this it's right, right next to it. <laughs> <laughs> it, start, it all started sliding up. Yeah. It's not as bad. It's not as bad as it Because we're was. stretched out. But when we yeah. were underneath, it started all just sliding up. Yeah, like the whole mass was coming up at us. That's, that got like... Yeah, it was out of the camera yeah, view. Yeah, way out. And there's a, there's a oh there was a loop in the a middle loop in the middle of recovery line dangling down. <laughs> I don't know. Don't know. It, it, it looks tight on Herc. Yeah. Don't make no sense. Yeah. Stretched out, this looks much better than it was. It was a big wad. Yeah. <laughs> With a it was just slowly getting worse <laughs> and worse and worse. Yeah. Uh, estimated time on the service? Uh, three. 
at this speed, three, four, uh, wait, 180 minutes, just under four hours. That's what we're showing. Four. Yep. 240 minutes to yeah. surface. Yeah. That's, you're out of here. <laughs> uh, gas. <laughs> yeah, yep. it's not, this is not something we can just. Okay, I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Four hours. You can, you can see the recovery line hanging down sometimes. See it? I think that's the recovery. Well, we'll need line. to do the that watch loop. changes. Oh, that, is that the big line? Is yeah. I'm just gonna stay awake. Oh, so maybe that. I you was are? gonna let Brandy sleep and just do it. Because huh. that's too big you to be the have daisy chain. That's what I'm gonna do. But that's gonna be yeah. one twenty after one. So might as well. Uh, well, How does that work? I don't know. It's, it's up to you if you want to stay up, but. Uh, it's not unreasonable to ask to be relieved. That's yeah. true. Uh, well, we coil it up on Argus on the on those two eye hooks. Yeah. So, if it had come undone there somehow, then yeah. you'd have extra slack. Yeah. I don't yeah. think the bowline would come un undone unless it was. Yeah. There's a lot of extra extra slack on there. Somebody commented yeah, that we thought we avoided the blue water, but it missed us and it called us back yeah, to it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's there. It's right near that foot, uh, either the weight or the football. You can see it in the light. See? It's a loop. It? So it'll be like 120. That way we cover. Okay, I'm going to go offline briefly to talk to, uh, make sure we spread the word here. It might still be. Well, then we got a hand over him, the tether end, in, in this kind of eve. Yeah. You should still be able to get to the recovery line because it's just the bowline. Yeah. It's just that extra slack that's all in the middle. Yeah. Well, it doesn't get all knotted up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I gotta use the facility there, Jake. Uh, okay. Jake, how would you fix something like this? Uh, you bring it up to the surface. <laughs> <laughs> After that. <laughs> um, Just redo it. Well, yeah, you look and see what went wrong. And you, f you fix it. You don't do it again. <laughs> It's tough to tell from just the aft cam on the vehicles how it yeah. became uh, unspooled on Argus, but <coughs> it's the recovery line on the vehicle, the one we we uh, attach to the crane, the one that brings in Hercules. That's the one that's loose. It's usually spooled up on the back of Argus, uh, like like wrapped around two eye hooks and secured with five or six zip ties. 
Um, but somehow it came undone. Next time, eight or ten zip ties. <laughs> yeah, or uh, or something. Big zip ties, <laughs> bigger, hundred pound breaking strength. Megan, can you believe how much blue water <laughs> we have gotten? <laughs> I feel like anytime me and Megan are on a watch, this is gonna happen. Yeah, maybe we just shouldn't. <laughs> maybe we just shouldn't. Be I think you need to be split up. Yeah. At this point, yeah. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> oh, what is that in the sea broccoli? There was like a an octopus in the starboard bio can. What? An octopus? I yeah. Didn't see anything. It no. was in the, right where the starboard bio box was. Come back. Oh, oh, oh there wow. it is. It came back. Dumbo. Oh, it's a Dumbo. Oh, look at oh, it. Oh, no. oh, my gosh. Get back into Hercules' camera. <laughs> <laughs> Find it, Jake. Oh. <laughs> that was so cute. Yeah, but it was. That was cool. It, well, at least we got an octopus. Got okay, action. I'm happy about that. We got an octopus, but not enough to like get a picture of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got to enjoy it. Sorry, viewers at home. <laughs> it was on one of our cameras, not in front of Herc. <laughs> I thought I was going crazy for a second. I saw this massive blob coming out the <laughs> Star Wars I screen. I wanted to come Star back. Box. Oh. Anyone got any good ocean jokes? Uh, I'm sure I have some. I just don't. No, you kind of put me in between a rock and a wet place. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you split the ocean in half? How? With a seesaw. Oh <laughs> good one. All right, that's my ocean joke. <laughs> uh, there it is. Wait, come back. Get in front of Herc. Where are you, buddy? It's, we just saw it. Do you it. see him? Oh, he's I see right. him. Yeah. Okay. Come oh. back. Oh, there he come is. Back. Sorry, viewers, again, you can't see anything, but I'm hoping it gets higher. <laughs> Maybe, Dave, is that something we can put on channel three? Yeah, tell me which camera it is. Uh, I don't know. The bubble cam. It's getting further away. Oh. Come back. Goodbye. Oh, no. Okay, viewers, if you go on channel three, you can kind of see a Dumbo octopus. Ooh, there's a What's fish. in front of her? A fish. It's swimming away that way. Can we zoom the fish? I yeah, think it's gone. Kind of Wait, what's that? that shadowy thing? Fishy fish. And her, am I seeing that? Have yeah, seen it's a, ghost? a fish. Yeah. But we we aren't entirely sure what kind of fish yet. I don't know. It's a it's a fish like fish. Come back. Oh. Why is everything leaving us? Oh <laughs> what kind of fish are Whoa. you? Oh. Is it a fish or it's is it another fish. dumbo? Oh my god, be a dumbo. <gasps> Get closer. No, it's a Swim. fish. Swim. It could be a slick head. 
How can you tell from this angle? <laughs> I've, I've seen fish, and the last time I found a fish I didn't know what it was, it was a slick head, so. <laughs> so are you going with law of averages on that? Uh? Yeah, so the family that fish is in is the Lepocephalidae. Oh, okay. How do you make an octopus laugh? With How? <laughs> Bob, do you know any deep sea jokes? <laughs> G-rated, please. <laughs> okay, knock, knock. Who's there? Fish. Fish who? Bless you. <laughs> What kind of hair do oceans have? Sea hair? Wavy. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the ocean the deepest? In a trench. At the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. That was silly. <laughs> it's like those, um, they're anti-jokes. Yeah, my favorite type of joke. With us. <laughs> Who is? Is there more than one over there? <laughs> um, a viewer in the Netherlands, here's a joke from him, <laughs> saying, what do you call a ship that keeps grinding its teeth? What? Nautilus. Like you're not. Uh, <laughs> very clever. Very clever. Very clever. That's very good. <laughs> Yeah, I just original. looked up sure. 52 ocean jokes <laughs> online. Great, so if you're watching, keep them coming. Yeah. I can't figure this out here. Today. Nope. What do you call a group of orcas playing instruments? An orchestra. Yeah. <laughs> Why can a crab never share? He's crabby. Because he's shellfish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what did this fish say about her deceptive friend? I have no idea. <laughs> sea lion. <laughs> oh my god. I like that one. Okay. What do you find in the middle of the ocean? Blue water. <laughs> <laughs> the letter E. Huh? The letter the E? Letter e. It's in the middle of ocean, the word ocean. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that one was bad. <laughs> What do you call an alligator wearing a vest? Can we bail too soon? Hmm. <laughs> uh, an investigator. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> uh. I don't know. Wake up, Mark. Yeah. Mark. Cool. That means I don't have to wake up, Mark. No one wants to wake up, Mark. He likes to sleep. I mean, don't we all? I know. Mm -hmm. I feel bad having 
uh, Brandy, who's supposed to come up here at next. She has an interaction at three something this morning. So she was just gonna leave her watch to go do it. But now if there's no watch at that time, I feel bad making her wake up for an hour, going back and then just like hanging out for an hour and then doing a show. So I'm just gonna do it, like hang out here for this whole thing, all blue water. Does she, does she know? I texted her. Okay. She won't know yet because she's sleeping until she sees she, my text. She texts her <laughs> SOS. Oh my God, <laughs> so many SOSs. Uh. I have a I have a joke, but it's not ocean related. Is it G? It's G. Go. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is an anti joke, so this is my favorite type of joke. Um, anyways, okay. <laughs> so uh, there's this man with a giant peach for a head, and he's walking down the street, <laughs> and um, a man comes up to him and is like, "Hey, like, what's going on? Why do you have a giant peach for a head? That's really strange." And the guy goes. Okay, well, it's kind of crazy. I met a genie, and the genie gave me three wishes. And for the first wish, I wished that I would be the richest man in the world. And this guy came up to me, and he handed me a briefcase with millions and millions of dollars. And I checked my bank accounts, and there was billions of dollars in there. And my stocks, I had stocks that I didn't know about. I was the richest man. My second wish, I wished that I could marry the most beautiful woman in the world. And like, there was model insert model name here um, and my third wish was that I had a giant peach for a head <laughs> I don't understand these at all oh boy oh boy it's gonna be a it's gonna be a long watch <laughs> those are your favorite kinds of jokes <laughs> It's, um, yeah, they're anti-jokes. <laughs> they're so, uh, like, pointless and silly. <laughs> it builds up to something, but it's not. It but it's not. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want a peach for a head. <laughs> Another joke. What's the funkiest fish species down there? What? Rockfish. Funky. Mm. Uh, get your rock on. <laughs> Someone said, was excited to watch, but now excited to wait. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Us too. However, this was the deepest dive in the monument ever, so. Mm -hmm. We did get to the bottom and it counts. We checked that box. So we got that going for us? Yes. Okay. We broke a record and now we're leaving, but we broke a record. <laughs> okay. What do you get when you cross a cow and a sea cucumber? <laughs> I don't know. A visit from the scientific ethics community. <laughs> 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 Immediate withdrawal of your funding. <laughs> Check, <a> please. <laughs> <laughs> Dave's like, get me out of this van. <laughs> here all week, everyone. <laughs> we'll hear for this entire blue water watch. Oh, God. Do wake them up? Think we can put it on the big screen? We can put it on the big screen? Megan, what's on the blue channel? Oh, um, yeah. We can work on that. There you go. It's happening. ROV, it's Mon uh, ROV 1. MLJ, I'm and then it's oh. Source ROV. And Argus butt. That's a better view. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't get what happened. Yep. 
had to have come loose on Argus's side and just started punching back. And it stopped, it's probably stopped at that football or something. So the current plan is to recover, conduct the uh, post and pre-dive checks and uh, launch the vehicles at this location at 4 a.m. local. Change of the watch. 0400 Hawaiian Standard Time. And go back down. Looks like an interesting dive site. Mm -hmm. Well, Emma, thank you. Now we're telling deep sea ocean jokes. Do you have any? Deep sea ocean jokes? No. You missed uh, some good ones. <laughs> and some weird ones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> and Coralie, who likes anti jokes, so I don't get them. <laughs> I like the sea cu cucumber cow one. Yeah, that was a good one, too. I think that's a good mm -hmm. one. Yep. Looks like something's loose further down, too. Yeah. It's not folded, so it's folded back on Herc. But it, it doesn't, he doesn't fold the recovery line back on Argus. He, he takes it up the BSR, tapes it, and then it goes around that eye hook that's in the center, and then wraps it around. And then it's there's a bowline tied to the um, the back of the. Looks like there's a lot more loops in it than we thought. So you still think it's lift line? Yeah. So either the, probably the I mean tie wrap came loose. I don't know. But we put like, f at least four on there. It's it's looped. We have put a tie wrap through each of the eye hooks and around, and then we put two in the middle through the frame. So it's it's kind of like, it's hard to see how all four of those would break. But I don't know. It could have gotten maybe tugs. Certainly wasn't any strain on the launch.
shirt. Okay. How far away is the how far away is the thruster from that, Jake? Can't hear you. The BSR is about I don't know a meter long. It seems to be at the end of that, and then the thruster is up near the, the top, the aft of aft of aft side of Hercules. I mean um, Argus. So I don't know, meter and a half away from it. Uh huh. Emma, when you were gone, we saw a Dumbo octopus for five seconds. Oh, wow. But not in front of Hercules, so we don't have any pictures. <laughs> huh. In the Argus view? Um, no, it was in no the bubble, bubble cam. cam. So we put it up in the hope that it comes back. Huh. And then we saw a fish, probably a slick head from a distance. Slick head. I don't think I've seen them. I don't know how Megan saw what it was. <laughs> It was so far away. Yeah, but like it Ooh, was very fish-shaped, and at that depth, there aren't that many fish-shaped fish. Yeah. Yeah, I'll make some blue water observations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. You can try to catch jellies on the telestrator. That's always fun. Yeah, but since this is all we have of this dive, I don't want the telestrator going out on channel one. <laughs> there. <laughs> it's all we've got. Maybe someone will want to watch our blue water. Maybe they need this for their research. You're right. You never know, we could see something really cool. Yep. Jake, someone's wondering what is the bubble cam and where is it located on the ROV? The bubble cam is located on the, the brow of the vehicle. So the, the front, um, like where all the lights are located on top. And it's uh, pointed downwards. And it's basically an old security camera. So it can rotate um, uh, like all, like to, to see uh, the inner parts of the vehicle so we can look at gauges and uh, equipment um, and uh, it's it's important for like uh, uh, diagnostic checks and also looking at the manipulator arm when we're sampling um, that sort of thing mm. so if it's going out I can yeah, it's on channel three. I can move it. So you can see the vehicle, oh, yeah. Niskin rack, 
The Mongo arm. Oh. <laughs> Water. <laughs> Water. <laughs> Too used to up and down being flipped on the Hercules on the vehicle. Hmm. And then the other arm and suction hose. When things get stuck, we have to <laughs> look back and we jostle them free. Yep. Thanks. Yes. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Dave. That's That's a That's a good call. Are there any birds out there? So I do think that's no. a tether. Yeah, for
Yeah, I'm right in the middle. Not clear which line it is.
Thanks, Mark. We have someone wondering how long it will take to come back. About three and a half hours from now, about uh, 0130 local. Conduct some post and dive and pre-dive checks on the vehicles and uh, get back in the water at 0400 local. What was the coolest sample you guys got to do look at today in the lab? You're probably going to say something geological, so I'll take care of the biological side. But I really enjoyed the little cup coral. It wasn't what I was expecting. It was like very hard and really tiny. So I thought it was really cute. But that I was, was gonna, my favorite. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> the cup coral was so cute and tiny. It was so For some small. reason, I thought it might be bigger, but... Mm -hmm. It, it was. It looked mini. Look at that. It was um, really small. It was so cute. <laughs> I want one. <laughs> <laughs> I want one. Just like you want to see cute. <laughs> You're gonna have a whole of bottom of the ocean. Of shallow water version, <laughs> so you can get one. Ooh, maybe I will get a one. Shallow water version. You should do it. And but maybe you more than one, sure. so that they have a friend. Yeah. yeah. Um, you need an aquarium. Can we look this up? Cup <laughs> coral. <laughs> She's looking it up. <laughs> oh, these look kind of gross. <laughs> Whoa, buy live coral for sale. Interesting. Oh, they're on sale. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a Sightway Coral Sale, 22% off. Use code SPRING22. What do you do with them? I don't know. Okay, care. Um, Mount, oh, what? Okay. I think, okay, it says the care level is easy, but oh God, there's a lot of stuff. I have, you have to feed them the symbiotic algae, oh, zoanthelae. Um, and then, yeah, and then supply them th uh, with their nutritional requirements through photosynthesis. Um, and then you, oh, you need to use light. So that's you gotta get the water chemistry right. Yeah, and then there's a lot with the water chemistry. You need proper calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium levels. Something nitrates and phosphates, and you have to change them often. I don't know. This looks difficult. It seems like a lot. Yeah. And like they don't like they kind of have this like green like this is what is the picture oh. is like green like like snot green color. The cup coral we got was like pinky like orangey mm -hmm. color was the like inner tissue was like a reddish and then the outer was like pink mm. it was like it was really, really cute, cute. It's like cute colors not this like weird <laughs> color <laughs> i was expecting it to be like soft it wasn't it was hard <laughs> yeah, yeah that's because they're sclerotinian corals so they're like the corals in shallow water 
They have hard skeletons made out of, out of aragonite. But it oh. looked so like soft. I'm surprised when that it was in when we took it. That's I why I was surprised. That, I just I'm surprised that you could have um, something aragonitic that deep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is, uh, it's a challenge. So these animals are particularly adapted to work against the dissolution. Um, okay. There are actually some groups that are actually actively working on studying um, these coral reefs that they found up in the Emperor's Sea Mounts at depths of about 700 meters, uh, trying to figure out why they're not dissolving, um, mm -hmm. how they survive in this area where you would have this act of dissolution. Yeah, okay. Mm. So but it's kind of amazing, because yeah. you never thought you would have these corals uh, at that depth in that part of the ocean. And, yeah. that, and that there they are. Require a lot of energy to do that, too. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's like, it, are they just getting a lot of food input so they can actively build their skeleton? How do they keep their skeleton? From dissolving, and where and where are they getting like the material to build their skeleton? Mm -hmm. But there are these like really dense reef-like structures uh, up there, and and we might actually see something similar on some of our shallower dives around in this area. Okay. So um, in the ocean, there's this thing called the CCD, which is the, what is it? Calcium, Calcium compensation, compensation depth. depth. Um, also, I always want to say calcium carbonate. Calcium compensation depth, and it's, um, it's the depth below, like below that depth, um, calcium carbonate starts to dissolve, and so you stop seeing um, a lot of different animals, which is why I was so surprised that corals existed in the deep sea when I first came out on Nautilus, because I just assumed they would have all been dissolved by then. Yeah, and some corals do have calcium carbonate skeletons, and, and some do not. Mm -hmm. So like the, the pink corals, the corallids, they have calcite skeletons, not aragonite. Um, the sclerotinian corals are aragonite, but then um, corals like the bamboo coral have a mixed skeleton of both calcite and protein. And then black corals are fully proteinaceous skeletons, for example. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you... The only way you find calcareous sediments deeper than the CCD are, is if they become buried <coughs> by other sediment at a shallower depth and then are transported by plate movement mm. uh, below the CCD. So otherwise you've got the siliceous sediments or clays. Siliceous ooze is one of my favorite geology terms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just really fun to say. Ooze. The oozes. Let's just ooze. So we did a deep dive uh, uh, at a seamount west of Baker Island, I think it was. Um, and I think we were... It wasn't quite this. It was like... 2,800, 3,000 meters. And there was really fluffy, uh, I think it was a, an ooze, probably a siliceous ooze, but really fluffy sediment at the bottom. And uh, didn't notice much there. But then uh, one of these hermit crabs with an anemone comes screaming down the hill, <laughs> <laughs> just moving really fast. And it came to a stop right in front of these little uh, things that look like grapes sticking up out of the sediment. And they uh -huh. turned out to be these uh, giant protists, uh, unicellular organisms that are about a centimeter or two in diameter. They really, uh, they looked like, they were uh, gromids. Oh, uh, nice. A gr uh, Gromia spherica, uh, a species that had only been discovered in like 2012 in the Red Sea. 
And some folks found them around the Bahamas, and then we found them in the Pacific. Uh, but they're, they move like amoebas. <laughs> and they can leave a trail through the sediment. And so it helped to uh, answer a question about fossil, fossilized trails that were older than the Cambrian explosion when multicellular organisms came about. And so people couldn't figure out how the, they assumed these trails were made by multicellular organisms, but they apparently could have been made by these protists. Yeah, that's pretty wild. It was. They, they were, and they were, you know, we va we uh, slurped a, f a few, but uh, they just... Yeah, they turned to mush. Yeah, they flattened out. And but I'd never you, uh, thought about a unicellular organism that you could see with your naked eye. Yeah, the other one that I know of uh, is the, uh, the xenophyophores. Those are unicellular organisms, but they're multinucleate, and they uh, create these really large tests. Yeah, that's what these had. That it was a spherical test around mm -hmm. them. Yeah. yeah, and they, they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, or shapes like fans or like sort of crenulated, rainy looking structures. Some of them are rounded. They're really, really interesting. Strange looking, yeah. And you see them all over the place, especially in deep abyssal plain areas, but even in shallower areas, hmm. in sediments. But they're the, I think, one of the largest singular cell organisms on that we know of, at least. Huh. So yeah, keep your eyes out for grapes sticking up out of the sediment. <laughs> <laughs> they might be called sea grapes. <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard of a... There's a plant called the sea grape. It's like a tree. Well, if they go in around four, is it still going to be an 18-hour dive just from there? Well, I'm not sure if we'd want to recover it. Let's see. 2,200. Yeah, I'll talk that over with Steve. Oh, the four to four to eight watch had this whole had the descent <laughs> before <laughs> too. <laughs> That's fine. They they can take it. <laughs> okay. I mean, if we come up around twenty two hundred tomorrow, that's still us. So. <laughs> yeah. <Yep. laughs> oh man, that's gonna be so rough. <laughs> Trying to stay awake to do all the samples. Oh. <laughs> I was like, I want to go home now. <laughs> Megan might give us give us some off. I don't know because. What? Megan and Mary and Amber on that watch. So maybe mm. we could start helping them and they might let us go to bed. <laughs> we'll see. Problem problems for for later Corley and Leilani <laughs> to figure out. Future Cross Corley's that bridge problem. When we get there. Yeah. After nap Corley and Leilani yeah. to figure out.
So Carly, when you go back to Rhode Island, do you still have classes? Yeah, I'm taking two classes right now. Um, but uh, hopefully no one's listening. But uh, for one class, I uh, decided not to care. <laughs> I decided not to care about it. <laughs> she said to eight countries. <laughs> now everybody knows. It's on the internet now. <laughs> I one class I do care about, and I um, I did a lot of work for it before I left, and um, so now I'm just keeping up with the reading. It's actually a science communication class. It's uh, called Public Engagement with Science, um, and it's really cool. We get to work with community partners. So I'm working um, in Providence. There's an organization called Southside Community Land Trust, which um, they have a bunch of community gardens around uh, the Providence area, and uh, they like work on engaging, you know, like farmers from like immigrant farmers, and they're all about like composting and increasing um, kind of like city awareness around particular issues around anything related to that, and they have a really big. Uh, urban uh, farm as well and they do like plant sales and then this thing this part I'm a little bit uh, confused about but I I think it's really cool and I'm planning on asking um, one of the, the the person our partner who we're working with about it a little bit more but um, there's something that they can do where um, you can it's this idea of prescribing homeless people or prescribing people food um, so that because you can prescribe people medications and stuff like that. But a lot of times people, you know, can't eat and that's really important to sustain yourself. Um, so it's kind of this really interesting idea, especially for people who have like mental health issues and stuff. Um, the idea of prescribing food or prescribing shelter and stuff like that. So that's something that they're working on, which I think is really cool. Um, but anyway, so we're working on a project with them. And I don't know, I just like the papers. I'm learning a lot about like different engagement strategies and stuff like that, which is really cool, which is also one of the reasons why I like to come on Nautilus because they do so much public engagement. Um, the other class is a data analysis class and <laughs> I could not <laughs> care less <laughs> about it. <laughs> it's just like it doesn't really apply to my research and um, I don't know why I thought I I don't know why I thought it would be an interesting class but um, I'm like brushing up on my MATLAB skills so that's that's, that's helpful. Good. Yeah. yeah. Always always useful but um it's just it's more geared, it's not at all geared towards geologists. It is geared towards like chemical oceanographers and biological oceanographers. And it's just stuff I'll never need to know how to do. <laughs> but um, at least, you know, <laughs> yeah, but I'm in the class now and it's, it's too late to turn back. <laughs> and honestly, it's it's not that hard. Um, it's not that hard to do. It's more just uh, when I once I got out here, I was like, yeah, I'm just going to figure out the rest when I get back. Uh. Oh. Was, Ilani, was, was that it? another anti-joke? <laughs> 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 She's like, no, it's real life. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is my real life. Leilani, <laughs> uh, what's... This are you done? Or are you, like, yeah, I'm done with doing? my classes. My data collection period for my master's thesis ends end of May, so it's a one-year snapshot period for fisheries. And the next couple months I'll spend on data analysis. <laughs> 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 data analysis and um, just writing up my thesis and then hopefully defending in December if wow. all goes well. Yep. Yeah, we were actually talking about <laughs> Data yeah, analysis a earlier. Bit earlier. But yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure, I mean, if anything, at least I know that these tools are available to me mm -hmm. to not use. <laughs> <laughs> you never know when you'll need them. <laughs> when I was like, I'm using them all the time. <laughs>
Yeah, like I, it's actually kind of funny because I decided to take the class because, uh, well, th it's kind of hard to find geology classes or classes that seem applicable to me um, or what I'm doing. Um, which again is also why I'm always really excited to come out on Nautilus because I feel like I can learn so much um, on the ship um, more than I could <laughs> any class really, honestly. Um, and uh, so I, I, w I took this and then someone else in my lab, uh, or Rebecca was gonna take the class and an another friend of ours was gonna take the class and then I, my roommate who's in ocean engineering at uh, URI He's a PhD student. Um, was al also is taking the class, and I was like, we have so like we have another friend, my roommate, um, who's a biological oceanographer, and we were always trying to, we were trying to convince him to take this class. And he was like, no, like I don't really want to, like I don't want to add any extra classes that I don't need to take. So we're all in this class that none of us really are going to need to use because. Um, my roommate who's taking the class with me, who's in ocean engineering, is in Brennan Phillips' lab. Doesn't do anything with data analysis or statistics, is mostly <laughs> doing, <laughs> like, I don't know, this kind of stuff. And um, and then my other friend is a chemical oceanographer who's, like, studying deep sea trace metal cycling. And, um, and then Rebecca studies volcanoes, and I study ferromagnetic crust, and so none of us are really going to use this class, and we complained to my roommate, who we tried to get to take the class with us, um, about like what we're learning and stuff. And he's like, "Oh yeah, like PCA is like, yeah, I know, I know, I know about that stuff. And yeah, maybe I should have taken the class." And it's like, "Oh my god, <laughs> it's just like we told you." Yeah, we told you. Uh, it's funny how these things work out. But yeah, it would have been really useful for him to take the class. <laughs> Are you still teaching, Emil? A little bit. Yep, not this summer. I'll probably start again in the fall. I will be teaching some teachers in the uh, oh, nice. summer for a week. Nice, uh, what's it, uh, Project Ocean, funded by the American Meteorological Society. That is a fun one. Cool. I give them an ocean exploration talk. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I would like to take a class from Emil. He's a very good presenter. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's why we make him do so many ship to shore interactions. <laughs> 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 Spread I, your knowledge. <laughs> I think I escaped tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow's the busiest day I think of this cruise for interactions. I'm doing one tomorrow. Same. <laughs> Six thirty. Six thirty. I did not see. Did you? <laughs> I didn't see the two p.m. on the side. <laughs> I got the two p.m. <laughs> so I thought six thirty was like the earliest one, and then Carly snagged the two p.m. <laughs> I was offering to trade; I had nothing to give to her, but it was worth a shot. <laughs> well, if you really want it, I'll, I'll trade you Carly. You Wait, what's my spot? Wait. Ooh. <laughs> Wait, what spot what, do you what, have? What? Oh, I'm with you. Oh. Oh. Cute. oh. Okay. Jamie's doing it too, if that helps. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, so it's gonna be three of us? Yeah, because usually we have one SCF and there wasn't uh, one, so. Oh, okay. She's thinking about it. <laughs> you don't mind a 6.30 a.m.? Oh, I'm not gonna go to the 6.30, sorry. Oh, okay, no. Oh, <laughs> she was just gonna <laughs> give you the two. No, I thought you were like. Ugh. No, she wanted to trade. <laughs> no, no, you can have both. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking to make a trade here. Yeah, that's going to seem like a good trade for me. Sorry. <laughs> She's got peanut M&Ms. Do you want those? I've got a whole bag. I've got some cookies from Saipan. Um, sweet and sour watermelon candies. <laughs> what are sweet and sour watermelon candies, and how are they different from... Oh, my God, you pineapples? and your watermelon with the... Or light cheese? <laughs> yeah, it's the... Well, it's that, yeah, the little chewy, chewable, like, watermelon stuff. Or, sorry, did I say sweet and sour? Well, it is pretty much... Like the, oh, the sour patch. Yeah, it's almost like that. Okay. But it's like an Asian snack. Okay. Yeah, hmm. I got it at Target. We have them on Guam. It looks slightly different, but I'm hoping it tastes the same. You haven't tried them yet? No, they're still in the bag in my cabinet, my snack cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for a good day to bring them out. <laughs> 
I know, I haven't even opened my Cadbury mini eggs yet. Mm -hmm. Neither have I. I'm waiting. I still have lots of oh, snacks. No, I've definitely busted into my snacks. I busted into them, but I feel like it's going to be like a nod of this week and then next week's going to come and everyone's going to be like, we have so many snacks left. And you're going to have to like eat all of them. My snacks. We'll make Even a cornucopia of snacks. those pineapples. <laughs> You've been handing out the pineapples. Those pineapples are awesome. They're just so much fun to eat. <laughs> it's like such an experience. Mm -hmm. So many dimensions. So many 3D pineapples. I actually think it's funny that I didn't realize that they had the name 3D pineapples. I thought that's just the way, like a good way to describe them. And then they're actually named 3D pineapples. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I didn't make that up. What is that noise? Yeah. Did oh my gosh. Dave, is that you? Dave, did you make a noise? Did you make a noise? Or, or phone? Something made a noise. That's Are the birds weird. outside? I was thinking that. Oh, it could maybe? have been a bird. <laughs> Is that a bird? It sounded like an alarm <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah, it sounded, it sounded like an bad. alarm. Hey, Tim. <laughs> we Were heard you? an alarm. Did you make a noise? It was... Uh, oh, oh, maybe that, that was it. it. Mm. Okay. Server Tim, deck. The, uh, Tim's the stealthy ninja of the night. He just, like, <laughs> slips in. Does I'm the, like, I just hear this back. noise. So. Oh, oh. Hello from New Zealand. Uh, we are going up. Hi, we New were going Zealand. down. Now we're going up. Hello, New Zealand. I've always wanted to go to New Zealand. It's I was beautiful. there for a nine-hour layover. <laughs> Funny story. <laughs> so in 2016, I traveled solo. Well, it wasn't my first time traveling solo. I've always actually traveled by myself. Now that I think about it. But this was like, I was going to Mo'orea. So it's an island right next to Tahiti. And because my dream was like, to swim with humpback whales and to listen to them sing. One year later, I found out you could do that in an island right next to Guam. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, so in order to get there, as I've mentioned, you know, a lot of times throughout this trip, like traveling from Guam is very difficult and expensive. So I took the cheapest way, but it was not the most pleasant way. So I flew to Japan first and then from Japan went to New Zealand. But I didn't do my research. Noob traveler that summer in New Zealand is their winter. Yeah. So when I stepped off the plane when oh we no. landed in New Zealand, I was wearing a tank top with some shorts, you know, like island wear. And the flight attendant looked at me on my way out and I was like, oh, honey, you're going to be so cold. And I was thinking in my head, like, New Zealand, big island. Why am I going to be cold? I walk out and everyone's wearing winter clothes. <laughs> and I start freezing. Oh, no. <laughs> like yep definitely new traveler did not look up the weather here <laughs> and everyone just kept looking at me and the only girl in tank top I even had it was Dory on my shirt and she had like a bubble thingy I said I speak whale <laughs> so <it was> like, <laughs> if it wasn't just the fact that I was wearing a tank top but I had Dory <laughs> on it <laughs> well I must have thought I was a weirdo <laughs> so you remember our SCF from New Zealand, Hannah Pryor? Yeah, she's had a baby. Yeah. Mm. Kamala's got a little sister now. Camilla. Anyway, I couldn't leave the airport. I had a nine-hour layover, and I couldn't leave because I did not have the proper clothes. So Aww. that was fun. <laughs> Uh, you didn't buy something in the airport? It was way too expensive. Uh, yeah. That's yeah, I was true. on a budget. I think I only brought like 500 bucks with me to Tahiti. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but did you get to hear the whales? I did. Well, that's good. It was worth it, yeah. Beautiful place. Yeah, I definitely, um, when I was younger, I would choose the cheapest flights and mm -hmm. I went to New York for one uh, break and um, I was going to have this layover in a state so I was living in uh, I was like going back home to Oakland at the time and so I had a layover in some square state I can't even remember I think it started with an O so take your pick um, and before before I got on the flight, actually, 
I had lost my ID when I was in New York. So I was, and that was my only form of identification oh, that I had. No. And I would have brought my passport, except I was going to Thailand later <laughs> that like year and I needed to renew it. So I sent in the passport to get it renewed. So I didn't have a passport. The only passport I had was one of me when I was like nine years old or something. <laughs> so my parents uh, like overnighted it to my friend who was living in New Jersey, who was already planning on visiting. I like grabbed it there. I like got on the plane at JFK and that was totally fine. Um, they actually, all they asked to do was to see a credit card with my name on it. Um, but then I got to this random state in Oklahoma thinking, oh, okay, they'll probably just ask me the same thing. Um, but since I had a layover there, it was an overnight layover. They made me leave the airport, which I didn't really, I didn't realize I was gonna have to leave the airport because a lot of these smaller airports completely shut down the airport at night. Once like the last flight is like done, then they shut down the airport and you have to leave like the TSA area. So then I had to go through TSA the first thing in the morning. I like barely slept. I'm like going through TSA. And um, yeah, they they were <laughs> really sussed out by me. I don't know that I didn't have, they didn't understand like that I didn't have any ID and the passport issue. And I had to go through like five different searches. They like completely opened my bag and like took all of my clothes out and it was <laughs> terrible. But I, so I like, and I don't know. And now with Providence, so many air flights go through Chicago, which Chicago has so many issues. I've had so many flights canceled. Actually, to come here, Jake and I really struggled. <laughs> because our flight to Chicago was late and we they had to hold the plane for us in Chicago. Yeah, we landed 15 minutes after we were supposed to take off. <laughs> oh my gosh. We yeah. ran across the airport. Well, yeah, we ran across the airport, made it, but um, I don't know. I think I prefer direct flights now because it's just so much less yeah. stress. The cheapest flights are, they always give you connecting and yeah. long layovers and... But yeah, they are more expensive, but it's like, is it worth the headache or? I know. So we're saying a couple bucks? I don't know. I now discover that it is, it really is worth it. Yeah, it's like yeah. all this stress, it's gonna shave years off the end of my life. <laughs> but if you think about it, if it's shaving years off the end of your life, that's more years you don't have to pay for. So maybe it is worth it. <laughs> You're saving money. <laughs> Only if you spend your money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have a good question. Uh, they're wondering if the people of the island groups that we're diving at had the similar religious or cultural connection to these sites like the Hawaiian people did and do in uh, Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. Um, it's not the same. It's different cultures. Uh, there's actually no people living on Palmyra where we are near currently. Um, sometimes they have staff members, but um, at this time there's no people actually living there. Um, uh, there's some. Oh, not, not living. They're, they're yeah, researchers. Researchers, yeah. yeah. But yeah. no community of, like, there's no, act, um, no community of people. Inhabitants, yeah. yeah. Um, but some of the islands do in this vicinity. Kiribati is not too far away. Uh, some of their islands. But I don't know their Me neither. attitude towards Palmyra. We will be going back to Papahanaumokuakea um, in just a couple weeks, actually. The ship will be heading to uh, Liliokalani Seamount. Or sea mounts. The ridge, yeah, the, the Liliokalani ridge. It's a uh, bifurcated uh, sea mount chain, which makes it really interesting. It's probably a couple different formation processes at work there. Yeah. You know, why would you have a one hot spot uh, and then a bifurcation of that? So, yeah, maybe there is this lithospheric stretching or two hot spots. I don't know. But uh, we mapped the heck out of them. We mapped them as best we could. Yep. Last fall, there's some large geos. King George Seamount um, is, is a big one. There's one that was partially mapped, and I think it'd be nice to cover that again. But there should be some interesting dives up there. 
Yep. So everyone going um, on that trip, we will uh, do the same thing that we did last year. We'll have a cultural liaison on board the ship and uh, make sure we're following the right protocols to be respectful of people and the culture. Yeah, some of the uh, ridges along that chain are just narrow and uh, bumpy, and not at all like the guillos. And then there's some other large guillos there. So yeah, interesting processes. Had some fin whales swimming with us up there. Oh, I thought you were gonna say now. Is that? <laughs> I thought you were gonna say now. Oh. I was like, where? <laughs> yeah. <I was> like, <laughs> Aren't you cold in a t-shirt? Not yet. Not Are yet. you cold? Anyone cold? Elani's over here putting on long sleeves, sweatshirts. You probably got a blower <laughs> on you. Yeah. It's right there. I'm so cold. I made sure I put on my I long just came sleeves. from Rhode Island. <laughs> it's so, cold. so like, cold there. I feel like nothing compares to... I'm, well, that's not true. I'm sure Midwest is worse. But I feel like, like the Dakotas are colder. Yeah. <laughs> My, uh, I'm my from Anchorage, mate. Alaska, so. Oh, yeah, oh, Alaska. Okay, yeah. We'll start talking about cold. <laughs> <laughs> How cold Actually, does it get there? I, I lived in the Midwest for a while. Really? Uh, yeah. They get pretty cold, too. In uh, January and February uh, in Madison, Wisconsin, it was oftentimes colder in Madison than it was in Anchorage. Really? But Anchorage wow. is on the coast. Uh, That's and, true. And has the uh, Japan so moderate, moderate the temperatures a little bit. So. In the winter, what is, like, the average temperature in Wisconsin? In Wisconsin. Um, you know, zero to fifteen degrees yeah. above, uh, and then and then kind of goes up and down just depending on weather. Yeah. Uh, what about Anchorage? Anchorage, about the same. Uh, we'll have cold snaps, uh, say in January, early January, right after the first of the year. Usually, we're going to get down to ten below for uh, okay. for a few days, and then uh, sometimes colder than that. It's uh, north of there, like in Fairbanks, it gets really cold. Mm. Minus 50, 40, 50 below zero Fahrenheit. Though at that temperature difference between Fahrenheit and Celsius is uh, not great. Yeah, no. Uh, cold all the time. Coldest I've ever been out in working on a job was 55 below. 55 below? 55 below zero. No. Oh Whoa. Yeah. We, did, <laughs> we did a TV show up uh, outside. Oh, so cameras. That's so outside, cold. So. Where was that? Uh, it was about 125 miles north of Fairbanks, okay. just above the Arctic Circle. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the farthest you can drive on that particular road. Uh, it's at the banks of the Yukon River, uh, and it's a little uh, town called Circle, Alaska. Circle, Alaska. Yep. Let's Google it. I bet at some point, though, once it gets so cold, like, you kind of... Like, does it matter, like, how much colder it is? Yeah, really like, I'm question. sure, like, there's, like, a temperature, and it's, like, okay, like, past then, like... It's just cold. <laughs> it's, it's the same. Um, yeah, to a certain extent, but when when it gets as cold as 50 below zero, uh, the cold is like a knife. It, it cuts <laughs> through wherever. Uh, if you have, uh, you know, if you have a, a seam or a zipper uh, open, you know, in your jacket or... Uh, just not enough layers or not enough overlap in your layers, the cold seeps in and, and cuts right in and you feel it. Uh, and it's definitely colder. There's uh, only 60 people that live in Circle, Alaska. Yeah, they do. I'm not sure why. <laughs> <laughs> it's so small. It is. Um, we, we left Circle. We were there for about a week working for Japanese TV, NHK. Uh, and they were doing a show. The Japanese are really big on the Northern Lights and that kind of stuff. And we were doing a show uh, wrapped around that. And um, uh, when we left uh, Circle, we drove back to Fairbanks. We had worked all night that night. We drove back to Fairbanks. We came over Hegelbarger Ridge, which is, uh, uh, takes you down into the Tanana River Valley, which is where Fairbanks is located. And we had gone from 50 below to, it was, in Fairbanks, it was about 20 below. And it felt like spring <laughs> at 20 below zero. It was like, oh man, it's so warm outside. <laughs> so it, 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 that cold messes yeah. with you. It really yeah. does. People use, it says you can find um, 
that most of the original town has been destroyed by the river, but they have tombstones dating back to 1800s. I can't even imagine, like... Gold! Yep. Yeah, but it's, it's so it's cold, like... Town. And, and it's, on the, and it's really on the Yukon bundle. River, which is like a giant highway going uh, east to west uh, mm -hmm. across Alaska. And so there were riverboats, and uh, that was a big uh, source of uh, transportation uh, across the state. Well, the biggest things to do is to go on the river, go camping, and go. that's camping. it. That's what the website says it's to do. <laughs> it's out there in the boats. But you can drive there. So. Yeah. It's really pretty. I mean, the picture is really pretty. Oh, the picture looks nice. Unlike, right? uh, Look at that. Do some ice that. skating. Oh, Unlike a lot of Alaska, where, where there's no sure. road system. For those of you from Rhode Island, which is the smallest state in the Union, yeah. Alaska is the largest state in the Union. It's twice as big as Texas. Whoa. Rhode Island has more road miles than the state of Alaska does. Huh. <laughs> has wow. more what? Road miles. Road miles. <laughs> wow. Roads. That's crazy. That is... There you go. I can go on and on. I have a whole PowerPoint presentation on Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> I do. They just ride moose around. <laughs> oh, big dog sleds. <laughs> I've always wanted to try that. It sounds like dog sledding. Yeah. It's great until you fall off. <laughs> yeah, no, Which, that's probably true. Did of you most hear about things. the? What's it was in the news like a, maybe two months ago or a month ago. There was a woman who was practicing for the um, Iditarod and the, she, her and her dogs got attacked by a bear. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh that happens. Yeah, that's, so, that's out, so scary. You can't like do anything. Like right. no. it eventually stopped, but yeah. uh, it hurt more, a lot of the dogs. More common is, uh, is to come across a moose in the trail uh, and uh, moose are mean and uh, they'll turn around and attack and yeah, stomp, I've heard that. stomp the dogs and that wow. kind of stuff. Wow. So, uh, uh, moose encounters uh, happen every year, and sometimes during the race itself, during really? the Iditarod, yeah. Uh, I've been on the Iditarod, uh, on the trail itself, three times. Wow, uh, cool. I've been to the finish in Nome five times, mm -hmm. uh, doing uh, coverage for TV, and uh, and doing and the start in Anchorage and, and the restart in Willow a dozen times. Wow. So, yeah. I wish my dog could even run. <laughs> huh. Three-legged race. <laughs> it's got two more weeks. <laughs> Sorry. I know. <laughs> Too soon, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh. The worst part is like the recovery time period. It does not pan out well for like our lives the next three months. <laughs> We're barely home. Ugh. This is the recovery for uh, Kelly's dog, not the recovery for. <laughs> oh yeah, my dog. <laughs> <laughs> not the dog sledding dogs. Oh, I or the RV. <laughs> the RV recovery. No, this. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awful. Lani, what are some fun things to do in Guam? That's so weird that you asked. I was literally just thinking about all the things I'm gonna do when I get back home. Really? <laughs> <laughs> um, there's there's a lot of outdoor things to do in Guam. Guam is really small, so um, there's not many like indoor things to do. So when you live there, it's really like making the most out of the outdoor stuff. So there's a lot of hikes on Guam. Um, Guam is interesting in that half, the northern half is limestone and the southern half is volcanic and so all, like most of the really good hikes are down south in the mountains, which is where I also really enjoy camping. So we we'll do a 2 one um, do a long hike, make it worth it, camp overnight, hike back. Um, are there dangerous animals on Guam? Like if you go camping, do you have to worry about like something? No. <laughs> well. <laughs> The invasive wild pig, the wild boar, mm. yeah, they've, they're known to kind of attack your neighborhood dogs. Um, 
they'll attack you. Um, most of the ones that I've encountered haven't been aggressive. I've only encountered one really aggressive wild boar during a hike, but luckily we had our dog and they, I don't know, our dog, our pit bull scared him off, I guess. Um, but other than that, just the wild boar, I would say. Uh, we have brown tree snakes, but they're typically harmless. They, we don't, I don't think anyone's really been attacked by a brown tree snake. They're invasive as well. But yeah, it's fairly, it's, it's safe to hike on Guam, very safe. Other than camping and hiking, I enjoy fishing, different kinds of fishing, fishing off the boat, whether it's trolling, bottom fishing, getting in the water to spearfish. Um, oh, wow. Do you spearfish? I, I try to spearfish um, at least once a week, but it's, life has been busy lately, so it's been more like twice a whole month. But I, I'm happy to go whenever I can. Um, Are you good? That's always a lot of fun. I'm good enough to bring home dinner. Hey. Yeah, I mean, some people really slay, but um, I just catch enough to feed That's still pretty two good. people at night. What kind of fish? My favorite is parrotfish. Parrotfish is my mm. absolute favorite fish to eat. Um, we try to harvest the ones that fare well against fishing pressure, so species like Hipposcaris longiceps or the Pacific longnose parrotfish, which is a yellow one. I'm not sure if they have them in Hawaii, but those are really tasty. Um, uh, what else do I like to eat? There's surgeon fish that are really tasty too, the unicorn fish. Um, yeah, those ones I try to go for when I go spearfishing. Yeah. Haven't had any of those. Me either. Yeah. What? You haven't had parrotfish? Mm -mm. Oh my god. Recipes, <laughs> preparations? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, parrotfish is like best fried. Like okay. you cut it up in pieces and just throw them in oil and it's definitely not the healthiest, but it's so delicious. And we have this concoction called finadeni on Guam, which is just soy sauce, a little bit of vinegar, throw in some calamansi, and you kind of just drizzle that over the fish. What is mm. calamansi? Calamansi is like, oh, you guys don't know what calamansi is. <laughs> <laughs> you are missing out. Calamansi is like this little, it's a small type of citrusy kind of, but it's, mm. it's a little sweeter. Then like lemon and not as, yeah, if you look up calamansi, it's very delicious. We have a lot of like calamansi juices on Guam. A lot of cafes um, offer, you can just squeeze them in a jar, freeze them, and just throw that in in the morning. It's really good for your, your stomach, um, hmm. but they're super delicious. I know they have them in cans, but nothing beats fresh calamansi. You might be able to find them at your the grocery store cool. in cans, yeah. But calamansi is also really good. Like if you just squeeze it, you know how you like you squeeze lemon on stuff like calamansi yeah. on fish in particular. Mm. Chef's kiss, very good. <laughs> um, you can also bake parrot fish. Um, that one's it's really a, just a preference. Um, we bake parrot fish when they're really big. Um, the smaller ones are better fried. So like when you bake them, um, you can put like mayonnaise over. Some people put like, um, you know, the Tostitos sauce for your chips. Like they'll put that like over their fish and bake it. You can also throw parrot fish on the grill. So many ways. I'm getting really hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a firm white fish. No, the, the meat is very soft. And that's oh, what a lot of people really love about parrot fish is it's so moist and soft and white oh, okay. yeah different from like your predators that have like a red meat and yeah, it's a little uh, yeah a little tougher yeah. um oh my god i'm getting <laughs> i'm fascinated I, yeah I can't, I can't food all night. if you guys have a chance to have parrotfish while you're on oahu like on a you know when we get back definitely recommend so good not much time on Oahu when we get back. <laughs> Flying straight to Anchorage. Oh, wow. Yeah, the day we get some, back? Uh, you know, shops yeah, and stuff that will sell it. Spend the night on the boat. Mm -hmm. and then fly Same. Back. But it's a non-stop. That's the best one. Hmm? It's a non-stop, six hours straight. And uh, that's due north from Oahu. Mm. Anchorage is as far west as Oahu is. 
That's how we do it. Better than my flight. Uh. <laughs> Layover uh, in Chicago. Oh. See? It's these yeah. layovers in Chicago. It's hard to avoid, I'm telling you. Uh, I got stuck in, in Chicago for the night. Um, before I came out here, I was at a client's uh, place in Buffalo, New York. And I flew uh, Portland, Seattle, Seattle, Chicago, and then was going to fly Chicago, Buffalo, yeah. and get there all in one day. Nope. Got to Chicago, I was sitting in the uh, American Airlines Admiral's Club Lounge. Got an email that said, your flight's been canceled. Ugh. Nothing until the next morning. I'd be so mad. I hate canceled flights. Yep. Well, there's a nice Hilton hotel. Uh, I don't have time for that. I got a broken dog. Attached to, <laughs> attached to the terminal in Chicago, so I just walked across to the Hilton and spent the night there. Hmm. I'm having major mom dog guilt about not being home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotta get back. I'm gonna be looking for calamansi when I get back. Yeah. I've mm -hmm. never seen it. I know. Oh, is I don't know if we even have it at my grocery store though. They might have. Uh, they like might a have specialty it, like, one. Yeah. Here, try like googling Asian, canned like calamansi. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. You can try Googling canned calamansi and you can see what the cans look like and look out for that. <laughs> I know some of the cafes will actually use canned calamansi. I've seen this. I've seen yeah. this at my Asian food store. Okay. It's really good. Megan, any idea what that gelatinous thing was? Uh, it was just some mucus. <laughs> it wasn't actually anything coherent. Okay, it, it sort of had a circular shape, but... Yeah, I just think just that's... Just gravity mute. acting on mucus. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> okay, I'm going looking for calamansi when I get back. Yeah. You. I like to have calamansi, so definitely you know, put it in water. Don't just have straight up calamansi. <laughs> but I like to add honey in in it too. We okay. have a fantastic Asian grocery store in uh, Anchorage mm -hmm. that has stuff from all over. Sweet. A lot of islanders in, uh, in Alaska. Really? Amazingly enough. Nice. Yeah, especially uh, in Anchorage. Uh, West High School where all my kids went. Mm -hmm. There's this huge melting pot of cultures. Cool. Uh, and um, suburban white kids are uh, mm -hmm. the minority. In, uh, in that, and that's cool. A lot of islanders. That's uh, interesting. Hawaiian, I, as an uh, islander, lot of, can't lot of imagine. Uh, uh. Lot of, uh, I mean, just uh, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I can't imagine living anywhere where, cold like that. <laughs> I know. I can't. And, and I can't stand the cold. And, and you, you, you <laughs> see these, you see these guys walking around in their shorts and their, and their <laughs> slippers, and and it's like, dude, what? Why, yeah. <laughs> how are your legs not cold? You know? Yeah, it's really weird. You either are on one side of the the spectrum, like you're an islander and you love you love and appreciate the cold because you've lived somewhere, you know, hot for so long. But you could be on the opposite, where it's like you're just so used to warm weather that you can't stand cold. So yeah. those mm. in Alaska probably are like loving the cold after yeah, living know. somewhere. I don't know how they do it. Yeah. I actually, I'm from California, and I'm from Northern California, and then I went to LA for school. Um, but, you know, I would go back home for the summers. So, Oakland, like Bay Area is like very, very nice temperatures, really no seasons at all. Um, so I'm a little bit interesting because I really don't like the cold, but I also really don't like it when it's super hot mm -hmm. either. So in Rhode Island, when it's the summer, it's so unbearable for me. <laughs> but once I got an air conditioner, I was fine. <laughs> you just need a heater and an air conditioner, and you're yeah, good. Yeah, a space heater and it. Yeah, Actually, you so the one, so maybe this is my own issue, but my roommates and I really don't like paying for heat, so we like keep it at like 50 
50. Wow. Yeah. And um, that's cold. <laughs> yeah, it's freezing. Yeah. Well, it's just to keep the pipes from bursting. Um, and <laughs> but not. <laughs> we just don't want the pipes to burst. But I'm gonna be frozen. <laughs> but uh, the. I don't know what I don't even know what to say. But uh, <laughs> our the dryer in our in our apartment is broken. Um, oh no. Yeah, it's been broken <laughs> since we moved in uh, in May. And <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were supposed to replace it in February, and they're like we told them it was like broken, and then in um, I don't know in the fall they said it would get replaced, and then they said it wasn't gonna arrive until February, and February came around, and I don't even know what's going on with it anymore. Um, but so, anyways, in the summer we weren't even using the the dryer because we have this little like clothes thing, and then we have a balcony where we would line our clothes on a clothesline. Um, but I have this little space heater, and I figured out a way to dry my clothes faster is to just put the space heater on it, and we like have it up in the living room, and we'll put the space heater on. So now it's kind of like a fun thing whenever someone does laundry, because we're like, oh, okay, great, the, the living room's gonna be really warm for a couple of hours <laughs> while clothes are drying. <laughs> oh, you need heat. <laughs> just turn the heat on. And the worst part, the worst part is that we accidentally left the heat on, like, way too high. We didn't know how to work the thermostat. And so we left it on, like, it, like, went up to, like, maybe, like, 65 to, like, 70 while we were gone for winter break. So I came back, I, because I went on, I was not, I was there for four days of the billing period, um, and our bill was like four hundred dollars. Jeez. Yeah, and none of us were there for longer than a week. <laughs> <laughs> Just heating this empty house to mm -hmm. sixty-five degrees. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> but I like how that's what you think is like warm for a house. I mean, it's not. I mean, it's not warm for me. But it's warm I'm, if no one's there. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I have weird, weird things when it comes to temperatures, clearly. I'm just gonna go update the whiteboard, make sure the folks waking up for their watch uh, have an idea what they're in for. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Right back. I think they could see on the, <laughs> the, the, the plot. <laughs> Just went down and then sh <laughs> right back up again. Bob, after this cruise, are you staying in Hawaii or are you going to go back to San Pedro? No, I got to go back. I have stuff to do in I'm just off for the one leg, and I gotta yeah. come right back out here. That's why I was wondering if you were just gonna stay. No. You know, I've been to Hawaii more than a dozen times, and I've never done a tourist trip. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this is like my fourth time now. I still haven't seen, yeah. seen anything <laughs> but downtown. I drove Oahu. around Oahu <laughs> one time. <laughs> Yeah, I've done that. Drive up to the North Shore and then yeah. back down the other side. It's a nice drive. I've driven around the Big Island, too. Mm. I like the Big Island, though. I love the Big Island. A lot. I guess no one's staying to hang out with me after the cruise. <laughs> huh. <laughs> have to go every, to that everybody's house. leaving? <laughs> Sounds like. <laughs> I'm off for three weeks. Oh, there's people that are on the next leg. Well, I mean. Are you on the next leg? Nope. No? You're just doing the one. Yep. Huh. That's all I got. Huh. Kylie's staying. Kylie's staying. I'm off for three weeks and then back for the next leg. Hmm. What's the turnover between the cruises? Like how much time in port? It depends on the cruise. Some of them yeah. are just two days. Um, and then there's one later on that's a bit longer um, after the tech testing ex uh, cruise. Actually, before the, the tech demos. So is it just two days uh, when we get back? 
And there's another one then. There's, a, there's yeah. one that's longer by yeah, the mapping there's, ones there's, too. Yeah, there's four days to un, uh, to demob from the tech demo. Yeah. How many oh, well, days to mob the tech demo? That's yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm on that one. Yeah, we got to fit uh, Drix and Nui operations into here. Well, and Mesobot. And Mesobot. Okay. <laughs> wow. They don't, they don't, Dana yeah. doesn't take up much space. It's like Dana and a laptop. Yeah. And, and he's okay. And they do other operations at night. We have to move Herc and Argus, well, all our stuff off. Really? For us to yeah. make room? Yeah. Yeah, the HPU out of the hangar. We got to, like, clear the hangar. Wow. Like, yeah, they just take over in there. Well, yeah. Clear house. I guess that's good for spring cleaning. Get rid of any of that stuff you <laughs> didn't want, didn't know you had. Yeah. Uh, it's more like, but what do we do with all of our stuff while they're <laughs> yeah. putting all their stuff in? We do have a storage van, but it's already packed full of stuff, well, including old mattresses. I was going to say, like the, bunks, <laughs> like the bunks out of the quads. Yeah. Yeah. Great. That was a surprise. That'll end up back in the warehouse in San Pedro for me to deal with. <laughs> I'm going Oahu, Anchorage, two weeks in Anchorage, Vegas, a week in Las Vegas, Portland. For, for work? Uh, yeah, it's a conference in Rome. Uh -huh. Then uh, three days in Oregon and then back here. Hmm. I get to sleep in my own bed two nights. I'm not a fan of Las Vegas. <laughs> I feel like you either like it or you don't. Like it's, you yeah. I don't know, depends on I can what take you it do. for about three days. Really? Yep, that's about it. Mm. I, I go to this conference every year. I haven't been in the last two years because it hasn't been held in the last two years. But I go to this conference every year. I've been going every year since 1982. Oh, huh. wow. That's the National Association of Broadcasters Conventions where you get to see all of this stuff. Hmm. I will say I like um, going to Las Vegas for the Cirque du Soleil shows because I really like Cirque du Soleil. Yep, yeah, me too. I, I like that. Yep, I like Cirque du Soleil. I've seen uh, half a dozen different shows. Yeah. Yeah, they're really fun. Yeah. They actually uh, come to San Pedro. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Where do they perform? The big tent. Down by the cruise ship. The big tent. Oh, okay. <laughs> they set up their tent. Oh, okay. This is one of those one of the traveling shows. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, actually, a bunch of people off the ship went to the show there. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. I'd love to do that. I've seen all the big residencies in uh, in Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Beatles one is the one I like. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I wanted to go to that one. Yeah, it's awesome. Beatles love. I think I did see that one. Yeah. Yeah? It's really cool. If you're a Beatles fan, we'll check it. Yeah. Because we're of a certain age, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but oh, the water one is uh, very cool. Oh, I've seen that one too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah, I that's can't what, remember I the names of any of the ones. Seen it a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, I just remember one was like it was about bugs, and everyone oh, wow. was dressed up as bugs. It was really cool. Oh, which one was that? Oh. Hmm. I just remember there was like these like three like very small like girls and they had these like logs that they were like using their feet to like move and they were like throwing them to each other they're like laying on their backs and throwing them oh, to each yeah. other and then yeah, they yeah. would like 
get up and like felt like they're like start throwing themselves around <laughs> like yeah. the logs. <laughs> it was crazy. What we do in Vegas is I like to bring my wife along too, and we go and find uh, stuff off the strip. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. away from okay. the casinos. Find a nice restaurant. Uh, you know, that kind of stuff, look for interesting restaurants and food and, and, uh, and other things to do that don't involve yeah. going in the casino. My, my ex-wife used to work for United Van Lines and she did all the convention stuff. Oh, sure, yeah. So she went there to yeah. help organize the whole operation yeah. there. And so we'd yeah. go to the, uh, this is Comdex or something, the computer show that they used to oh, have yeah. there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, Convex, I think, is right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a big one, too. NAB is a big one. CES yeah. is the biggest one. Right. Consumer electronics. Yeah. Yeah. But I've worked uh, I've worked for vendors. I've worked in booths at, at the convention center. I've been there for the, for the load-in and the load-out. Yeah. It's quite the amazing thing. And the Las Vegas convention center is huge. Yeah. It's absolutely huge. And, and it's gotten bigger. They've added on to it. Right. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, Emil, I have a good one for you. What animal or creature would you love to see? Like, what's your dream discovery? Mm. Someone's wondering. Right. Siphonophore <laughs> longer than 150 feet. I want to set the record. Someone is asking. It is a real question on this. It's not me yeah. making it up. Yeah, no, I want to set the record for longest siphonophore. <laughs> the Meg. The Meg. I'd like to see a Cuvier's beaked whale gouging the seafloor at 3,200 yeah. meters. More octopuses. Octopuses. Huh. <laughs> Giant squid would be kind of fun. <laughs> that would be fun. Mm -hmm. A whale. Any whale. Any whale. Any whale will do. Celebration. But, uh, you know, I've seen some things I never dreamed about seeing. The Syro-Toothed Octopus uh, that put on such a good show for the Herc camera there off of Baker. was amazing. Mm. I think that was one of the... That one went viral. That nice. Yeah, it's on our website. I think the YouTube video got a ton of hits. Yeah. Just I takes really want to see more weird invertebrates that I don't know what they are. Okay. okay. I want them to stump me. I think that would be fun. <coughs> that giant sea cucumber was something. <laughs> <laughs> I tagged it, don't worry. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was trying so hard. <laughs> to lift off. Yeah. It didn't even get off the sea floor. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just making more sediment. <laughs> that was like... I feel like we should discover it, like we should find a new shipwreck soon. It's been a while. That could be a good one. I don't know which one, but any, I guess. One that needs, like one that like people know about and just need to find. Yeah, I like shipwrecks. Those are cool. What was that most recent one that someone up in the Arctic? Uh, oh, no, uh, Antarctic. Yeah, Antarctic. The, the Endeavor? The, yeah, Endeavor. Yeah, the Endeavor. Shackleton. Yeah, we had had a trip plan there at one point. Yeah, Bob wanted to go find that. Huh. Mm. Too late now. Yep. Got to find a better, new, different one to find. That was cool how preserved it was. Yeah. Yeah, there's... Uh, they just don't have the wood boring worms or mollusks down there. The, the larva apparently can't get down there because of the currents or... Yeah? The wood for them to eat. I mean, there's lots of, yeah, there's there's lots of life down there. Right. In Antarctica. Mm -hmm. you know. And I think they found, off of McMurdo Sound, they found some uh, fungus and bacteria that it will eat wood, but they're just, because of the cold waters, they act so slowly. Oh. Um, the same was true for the Arctic, although recently they found some 
the wood that was being munched on so it could be the warming of the Arctic that's allowing some of these creatures to start migrate up there. Mm. And they don't have the circumpolar current to keep them out. But yeah, there's it was about 30 million years ago that they had trees on Antarctica, so there's just not much wood there to begin yeah. with. It's a long way up. Someone's wondering if a giant squid grabbing Hercules would be a mission ender. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Make for a good highlight video. Yeah. Once. <laughs> yeah. Once, yeah. As long as you just did cover the camera with a tentacle and mm. miss everything. Right. It would probably ink us. Did a giant squid ink? I'm assuming so. I feel like I it would. I don't know. Maybe in a nope. very big way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. So, so a lot of things that are out attacking them. The whales, right? So do we know how okay. big that sea cucumber was? <laughs> I can't get up my mind off that thing. I mean, like it looked like it was maybe 30 centimeters. So at, like at least, yeah. It was a good size. Long, yeah. 30 or 40, yeah. About half that thick. Mm -hmm. Not really. Big. Well, yeah, he's pretty round. But yeah. Does the next di next dive, like when we put him there, he's back in the water. Is it a yeah, different number or is it the same? It'll be a different two dive. Nineteen oh seven. Uh, or nineteen oh eight. Yeah. Same dive plan. We're almost to two thousand. We're getting there. He can go slam a nap in. <laughs> what? Go, go slam a nap in for power nap. <laughs> through. Mark I was about putting my head down. down there. <laughs> Let's see if we can get down at the exact same spot. Mm. See how good our navigation is. Ship handling. Yeah. <laughs> Check on the cucumber. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably still there. He's still there. He probably can't get away fast enough. He's just sitting there. Right. <laughs> they don't move very fast. And not clearly there's one. enough food for it there. Like he's it not he. It is clearly eating enough. Clearly. <laughs> it's doing pretty well. <laughs> uh <laughs> Emma's back here Googling how large can sea cucumbers get. <laughs> Over six feet. Oh there are some ones that yeah. are really Shallow big. water. Yeah. <laughs> the deep water ones don't get that, that long. But like, you know. No, thank you. We've picked up ones that are like, you know, the size. Some countries yeah. eat them. They're like a delicacy. Mm -hmm. What do they, do we know what they taste like? Um, I've never had one. Okay. They would be kind of crunchy. They have I know, I these feel like um, I wouldn't like it. calcium pieces in their skin <laughs> called uh, ossicles. Mm. So, you know, it has a nice little like surprise mm. crunch to it. Yeah. It says that they have a very neutral <laughs> taste and they're quite bland, but they take on flavors of other ingredients that they're cooked along with. I feel like that's like an eggplant. Yeah, the appeal lies more within the texture, which is somewhat gelatinous. Ugh. No. No, thank you. No. I'm good. I don't want gelatinous crunchy bits. Thanks. Yeah, you're just not really selling it. Yeah. No. Uh. Maybe with calamansi. <laughs> yeah, sea cucumbers are part of the conodermata, which means spiny skin. So they have spiny bits in their skin. I've seen a lot on Guam that get longer than the monitors that we have in front of us. Hmm. Really big. 
Have you ever eaten one? No. No, I've never. I don't think I, I would. There are about 1,250 species of them. Someone's wondering if anyone has had hagfish stew. Is that real? I yeah. have not. Mm -hmm. I think I'd pass on that Me too. too. I don't nice. really like hagfish. I'm good. <laughs> and Mola's so into these sea cucumbers. <laughs> 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 what are you learning about, Emma? <laughs> Look at that one. Yeah, pretty wild. I, I want to know where these six foot long ones are. <laughs> so I can stay away from those waters. A wrestling match with a sea cucumber. <laughs> can you imagine the trail they leave? No. <laughs> They're just like big, colorful, funky-looking worms. Kind of a cumbersome Halloween costume. <laughs> <laughs> Not so good on the dance floor. <laughs> I think as long as you get the crunch, the crunch movement, you'll be golden. Just lie on the ground. And <laughs> just <laughs> I'm gonna sit this one out yeah. <laughs> and that one. Oh my God! Last year. I'm over you on that craze. I don't know if you were either, Megan. I don't know who was out there. Last year, I'm one of the two I was on at the end. We, uh, we Are were you in talking the about the charades? The <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> everyone was doing, not everyone, not everyone. I was not involved in this. Oh, no. People, we were, do people were doing charades of different um, things. Yeah. And someone did, a I think someone did a sea cucumber. <laughs> they just lied on the ground of the social deck. Uh, Andy, Andy <laughs> from the uh, monument did... Uh, <laughs> a rock that wasn't loose. <laughs> <laughs> he did the tumbling snail, the acrobatic snail. <laughs> and he threw himself into it big time. <laughs> I never really liked charades. So I got it going by just sitting down and doing the uh, Chana Cops. <laughs> just sitting down and frowning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Then it kind of spiraled from there. <laughs> that was a good end of the cruise thing to blow off steam. Yeah. We got well, you guys barbecue? had that crazy weather. Oh, yeah, when we got back to port. Oh, well, that was after NA 134. We got back to port, and it was, yeah, eight inches of rain in Honolulu. Blizzard up on Mauna Kea. Yeah, it was insane trying to drive my car around. I thought I was going to flood it. Yeah, their streets were car door deep. Yeah, I told Kim Weaver uh, about the birds. 
<laughs> she said, how am I not on that cruise? <laughs> <laughs> She'd be freaking out. She would have been in, all like, over. the best of ways. Yeah. And she was fun. <clears throat> Steve, Steve Matter did a gulper eel. <laughs> it's a really good one. He had to do it, like, <laughs> six times because by popular request, and he just <laughs> totally committed every time. Mm -hmm. He's... A How do you do a gulper eel? Oh man, he used his shirt to be the lower oh. jaw. It's <laughs> <laughs> great. <laughs> but yeah, somebody else partnered with Andy to do so. He was the rock, and somebody else was the. Predator, the manipulator arm trying to grab it unsuccessfully. I'm tired. Charades that only ocean explorers would get. <laughs> Or find the least bit funny. <laughs> uh. Are we going to have a barbecue this cruise? <clears throat> yeah, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make it too soon. <laughs> You got some time to kill between the 1.30 recovery and the 4 a.m. launch, so <laughs> <laughs> fire up the grill. <laughs> Make your own, <laughs> just for you. <laughs> you and Mark, <laughs> the rest of the ROV team. Make yeah. them some burgers. ROV team's going to be a little busy. But you can make them burgers and give right. them to them yeah, after. Yeah, we'll run some burgers down to them. Go for a good hamburger. Jake, who does your cat like better? You or your girlfriend? Well, I left it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not you. <laughs> Probably not me. Well, she has to take it to the vet tomorrow, so we'll see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and be the, the favorite. <laughs> I also gave it a full can of food instead of half before I left, just to make sure <laughs> she remembered me. It's meant that. Yeah. You gotta cap those brownie <laughs> points. <laughs> Now I'm going to come back. My mom will have spoiled my cats, I'm sure. I don't have any pets, but I hope my roommates are doing all right. <laughs> the little mucusy one is less mucusy. <laughs> he actually just bought a new car, so. Mm. Well, that's good. New cars are always good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He drove his old one cross country to his sister in Washington, flew back. Just in time to pick up his new car. It's a nice road trip, though. Yeah. He, like, went skiing in Montana and did a bunch of stuff. It looked cool. Yeah. My other roommate is uh, going on the Tommy Thompson. Uh, so he was sheltering in place. Uh, he actually also flew. <laughs> he had the same flight that uh, Jake and I had, flying out of Providence, layover in Chicago, then flying to Honolulu. And um, their flight actually got delayed so much that um, they were still in Providence when the flight to Honolulu from Chicago had left. Oh um, my God. Yeah, so eventually they were able to get on, and uh, United gave them a, they gave them, like, a hotel credit, so 
they flew that day, waited for the, slept in Chicago that night, waited for the Chicago flight, and they bumped up my roommate to a first class. And Chicago to Honolulu is such a long flight. Nine and, and a half class, hours, I yeah. did it. That's what I did it coming down here. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. I couldn't imagine being in first class. No, I would want to. Yeah. <laughs> Did short to Honolulu. Mm, I did that uh, last year. Uh, never again. <laughs> I did when I came out in December. I did the Boston. It's a direct flight, Boston to Honolulu. Um, and for some reason, I thought that one was like nine hours, like eight or nine hours. And then they got on and they said it was 11 hours. And I was like, maybe I heard that wrong. And then they came and tried to like serve me dinner and I was like, oh, I'm not hungry. And they're like, no, like this is an 11 hour <laughs> flight. You need to food? eat this. <laughs> You're required to eat this food. You're required. Right. <laughs> I was like, okay. Ilani, how far was the flight from Guam to here? Seven hours. But the wrong day. Sorry? But like a different day, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I traveled back in time. So usually getting to the mainland, yeah, you like fly through Hawaii or Japan and it takes a long time just to get to the mainland. So, um, for example, I'm flying to California this summer. So I'm taking, it's three hour flight to Japan and then 10 hours to San Francisco. Yeah. And then from San Fran to SD is an hour. So it's gonna be a long, long like 10 or 11 hour flight, something like that. It's gonna be a long one. If you fly from uh Samoa to American Samoa, oh, yeah. you cross the Dateline. <laughs> it's a yeah. half-hour flight. <laughs> that my internship, yeah. Went from Samoa to, Samoa, uh, to American Samoa, yeah. and then to New Zealand, and then to Houston, and then to Providence. You're like, I don't even know what uh, time it is anymore. It was like a full 30 hours of flight. Yeah. It was yeah. absurd. That's math I can't even do. No, I don't even want to do it. It's time I cannot tell. Had to do that to Papua New Guinea, San Francisco to New Zealand to yeah. Sydney to yeah Port Moresby, oh. <laughs> and then it was like a two-hour bus ride from the airport to the where we were going. Yep. I feel like I should have taken a longer nap. Just have a gander at that blue water. It'll keep you going. <laughs> Will it? <laughs> so did you say you're staying up here? I think I'm just going to stay up. I don't yeah. know. They have an interaction at 3 and I feel, or 3.30, and I feel like if she woke up to do one hour of blue water, she'd just sit around for another hour and a half to two hours until the interaction, and that's kind of... I wouldn't want that. Yeah. So I'll just stay up. <clears throat> but she'll do the interaction. Or she better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> yeah, she was just gonna leave watch for the thirty minutes and do the interaction. Hmm. if she was on watch. I think there's like 11 or something tomorrow. Wow. It's a ridiculous amount. I went crazy. No, there's nine. There's nine. Who's with me on the 630? Is it Dijana or Brandy? Uh, Dijana. Dijana, okay. She's very good. Yeah, I Great. think it's with her school too. Chad it is, like. yep. It's her students. Mm -hmm. Thank you for waking up at 6.30 to join her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gotta do at least one. <laughs> Steve's trying to get 
10 in. He wants to do 10 interactions this trip. He wants to be the, I think he wants to like beat your record. He wants to, I don't know if you have a record, but he wants to be the chief science, the lead scientist who does the most interactions on an expedition. Mm. <laughs> that's his goal. Not a bad goal. Yeah, I didn't keep count. So he wants to do 10. Mm. He thinks that's a good number. No, but you always do a lot, so I feel like you're like the one to beat. 2019, yeah, I might have done that many. Yeah. I did, uh, I did a handful in the yeah. fall, too, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's got a lot. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you can bail out, Jake. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the watch. Yeah. Yeah. I'll stay up for recovery, though. Yeah. Well, we'll need if you if we have to get you up. Okay. I would just, yeah, just go to bed if they have to get you up. All right. Didn't put up too much of a fight about that, did you? Nope. <laughs> He's like, oh, you're telling me to go to sleep? Great. I said I would stay up once, and then, you know, it was counter, and that's it. That's it. <laughs>
39. Are you doing the math? Yeah. We're only at 18. So Ugh. we're coming up at what, 15 meters a minute or yeah. so? Okay. So yeah, right on schedule. <laughs> so yep. Oh. Get outside yard. So you caught a glimpse of a Dumbo, huh? Real quick. But it was there. Just for only us, though. No one else in the world could see it because it wasn't in front of Herc. Okay. They found one at 7,000 meters in a trench. Really? These guys are everywhere, yeah. I wonder what the shallowest is they've seen them. I don't know. Any idea on the upper minimum depth for a Grimpotuthis? Um, They can get pretty shallow, like they're a thousand meters. We saw one on our um, one of our Herc dives on the shakedown. It was we came right down to the bottom, right off Lanai, and huh. there was an octopus. And Boom. I called it. I felt really special. I was like, you know what? We're gonna see an octopus, and then there was <laughs> one. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> That was pretty amazing. It was a good moment for me. Should have bought a lottery ticket. I know, right? <laughs> That's like, though to be fair, I usually say that for most dives and there's never been an octopus. So I was pretty excited that I was finally right. It was bound to happen at some point or another. And then it hung out with us for a long time. Did, have they seen Dumbo's brooding eggs like the deep sea octopuses. Um, no, they don't brood the e eggs. They actually leave these like little egg cases. Oh wow! On like corals and things. So we've huh. seen that. Where what we've zoomed into a coral and there's a octopus egg case there. Very different behavior. Yeah, very very different. I guess that's sort of like the difference between the uh, serrate octopus and the inserate octopus, those little you know, your regular octopuses versus the Dumbo octopuses. S serrated and unserrated. Mm-hmm. <coughs> uh, there's a big difference in behavior between those? Um, yeah, it does seem like there is a difference in behavior. You get more of those, the Dumbo octopuses, uh, deeper, whereas, you know, your regular octopuses tend to be shallower. Though we do see some deep regular octopuses, like the Casper octopus that they saw on that one Okeanos cruise up in the Papahanao Mocha Camarine National Monument. It's the first time we'd ever seen a regular octopus at that depth. I forget what depth it was, but it was pretty deep. Hmm. And it was super cute and small and white. So it got the name Casper. <laughs> so which are the serrated, which are the unserrated? Uh, the serrate are the Dumbo octopuses, and serrate okay. are the regular octopuses. I wonder how they compare in intelligence. Um, I don't know. I'm sh probably haven't tested too many <laughs> grumpy toothes. That'd be really hard to test. <laughs> yeah, like you have to like first get yourself a grumpy tooth. This. <laughs> uh, they're probably not nearly as, uh, you know, escape oriented as some of our yeah. uh, regular or octopuses. They they don't really shove themselves into small spaces. Um, they tend to be more free living, swimming out in the open. So how we would measure their t intelligence would be hard. 
because they have different lifestyles. Yeah, they probably don't bury themselves in sediment. Or yeah, they don't change their color to blend into their surroundings. Why would they need to do that? Nothing can see them. Right. It's dark. So they just are good at drifting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't move particularly fast. They sort of just flap their little right. ears. But yeah, I was surprised to see, I think it was the Indian Ocean, uh, so, uh, I don't know, it was the, one of the trenches 